Ah, uh, yes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back to Sid Squad. You're uh, tuning in to the, uh, the live plane spotting show here at Sydney Airport down under again on uh, wow, a uh, happy Easter Sunday, the 31st of March 2024. A big hello to everybody tuning into the show at the moment. We've got about 500 people at the moment and uh, lovely to have your company, especially on this, uh, well, family day of, uh, of sorts. Doesn't matter how you choose to celebrate it. Uh, thanks for being here and we love having your company, hanging out with Kurt, the, uh, the host of the Sid Squad show today. And I tell you what, Sid Squad's been pumping them out this week. Back to backs daily at the moment, which is great, and uh, still still holding promise for another live show again tomorrow, and uh, not too sure whether that will feature Sydney Airport or the um, the Gold Coast Airport. So we're just going to have to wait and see. But um, some uh, some interesting uh, movements there from the Sid Squad fan bam, I've got to say, and a um, a cheeky special shout out from a uh, a good friend of the channel, moderator Oscar Boone, <laughs> has gone in and gifted five. Seed Squad membership straight off the bat, and uh, we've got Avgeek Dude, Turtle Dove, Jetman Gaming, and uh, Brizzy Triple Seven and Chipmunk Productions have been gifted a membership there by the uh, the cheeky lad uh, who's actually on site tonight uh, behind the scenes. Now I've also got to say a very special warm welcome to a long friend and personal friend of mine uh, who we've only just sort of recently reconnected. Has come up from the day uh, for the day uh, from the nation's capital, do a bit of plane spotting with. Oscar and uh, the lads are with us behind the scenes and uh, if we just uh, hang on uh, there we go there we go here we go <laughs> let me uh, let me just do a little bit of uh, housekeeping here and remove the <laughs> Will how are you mate good Kurt good to see you yeah again, lovely to have you Booty how are you champ <laughs> <laughs> it is absolutely fantastic to be here tonight. And look, yes. hasn't Shep's mound changed over the years? Remember when we oh. used to first come here, young guys watching aeroplanes, getting involved, and it was just a mound. It was. <laughs> it was two dirt mounds. Uh, you'd be you'd be um, pretty wise if you put your car on top of it because sometimes you couldn't get off. <laughs> <laughs> but it's look, it's really good to see Sydney Airport's contributed and, and, and done this facility nicely. It's great seeing families out here. Absolutely. Bringing the young kids, getting involved in aviation, being a part of all this. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, for you, it would have been... yeah. For you, if you haven't been up here recently, I mean, this was redeveloped in 2017, actually, yep. to, to its current form. Um, and then, thankfully, was named after Bruce Shepard, who was actually uh, an avid plane spotter back in the day. We're talking back early 2000s before he unfortunately passed yeah. in uh, 05. And uh, thankfully, we got it named after him. And uh, we've kept some plane spotting sort of um, nostalgia here at the mound, which is just brilliant. It is. It is um, sensational. And as I said, great seeing families out here. Great viewing, and I know you have people from all around the world yes. tuning in. Listen, you've got to come to Sydney. You've got to visit yes. this area. And then there's a number of places around Sydney Airport, which is great. But look, this is really the highlight, this place. You know, well, it's there fantastic. we go. You see, we've got to have Will on the show more often. He just pumps it up. Yeah, you've all <laughs> got to come on down under, you see. <laughs> but no, I met Will, I probably would have been close to 25 or 20 years yeah. ago, back in the days where we had the Sydney Airport message board going on. And we used to do plane spotting weekends uh, in both Melbourne and Sydney. Yeah. And uh, I saw your name actually pop up in the chat on a show more recently. And I've gone, is that, is that the Will that I know? And you reached out and it was and it's so lovely to reconnect and um, now you're retired, retired from Qantas work, uh, living in Canberra yes. and um and uh, you were telling me before that there's no better place, but you just need more planes. That's it. Canberra is absolutely fantastic for spotting. We've got a great viewing areas all around. We have a lovely car park where we do some spotting. You can reach out to the aircraft as they taxi by. Yeah. Unfortunately, we just don't get many airplanes, <laughs> which is the frustrating thing. But coming up to Sydney today, fantastic seeing some wide bodies. We've got a lovely A330-200 kicking by right now. Quite yeah, I, um, I will. Uh, let's, let's have a bit of a gaze on that one, actually. And that's one of my old girls that I used to work on quite a lot. Well, I think we uh, we might get a view of that on the... Uh, <laughs> there show. she is. One of the EBs. I can't really see which one she is, but... Uh, uh, should I uh, should I find that out for you, champ? <laughs> EBG. EBG. Yeah, OK, Bravo Golf. And if we get too technical, that is one of the Intercontinental A330s that uh, Qantas have. We have two EBH and EBG, which are were configured into the long range uh, cabin setup. So, and we have ourselves a nice 777-300, yeah. collectively known as a W class. Singapore 211, just uh, coming in there on runway 34 left. And uh, I was getting a little bit nervous there watching UPS vacate the apron there at the northern end of the field because they were taxing to the north. And I thought, oh, hang on, they're not going to 1-6, are they? 
Uh, currently, the winds favour uh, 049 at 11 knots. So they're coming in from the northeast, which clearly favours 3 4 direction, which is uh, great news for us for the nighttime show here at uh, Shep's Mound because, uh, oh, look, and uh, look, they're doing, the Singapore's doing uh, UPS <laughs> lineup. Bit, bit of a favour there. <laughs> doing a bit of a light up. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic, that. Yeah. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are running uh, three, four direction, which means uh, landings and takeoffs are happening from the south of the field to the north of the field. So on your screens, they'll be coming uh, from left to right as we sort of sit here at Shep's Mound parallel to the main north-south runway. So to give you some sort of uh, idea of uh, what that uh, might look like, uh, let's, let's have a look. Uh, and see if uh, this pops up here. Okay, forget the bit at the top. But as you can see here, we got the um, we're running sod props at the moment, which is a simultaneous opposite direction parallel runway operations in progress. <laughs> say that ten times fast, Will. <laughs> no way. That's the, that's the quiz for you for joining the uh, Sit Squad show today. <laughs> what it means is we're landing the main north south runway from the south on the left, which is the longer of the two. And then we're departing at the moment from the third runway, which goes out into the drink. Um, colloquially we uh, termed the third runway and uh, they're departing uh, off into the south so you can see that depicted there by the red aircraft icons where we are we're pretty much center of your screen there where the blue windsock is is pretty much where we're standing so we'll see all the action on the main north south runway uh, from left to right and uh, I suspect that uh, if if movements don't necessarily demand it. They might keep this sod props uh, operation in progress to limit the uh, the noise going over to the eastern suburbs, uh, or they might just uh, move everything over to the main north-south runway, and we may have a single runway configuration. The winds are due to shift from the northeast over to the northwest as the night progresses, and uh, we will see uh, most. I think most of the night on runways three, four, uh, in front of us, and then at about 10:45 uh, p.m. Uh, the winds, uh, the runways will flip and then we'll be entering in curfew operations whereby all the departures will depart from the north and then go to the south. As uh, we'll see Malaysian Airlines just rolling through in just a minute here. The, uh, the One World livery, the 330, just coming in from Kuala Lumpur there. And uh, that service Malaysia 141. And these guys will go out again tonight. As we just got uh, photo bombed there by our uh, <laughs> our velocity aircraft, the 737, with the lovely sky interior lighting. I tell you, yeah, it looks now, sensational, doesn't it? To me, is that more purple in real life? I think it's hard to tell, isn't it? It is hard to tell. And look, the reality is, it's a LED lighting system inside the aeroplane. It can be adjusted to particularly any colour that you imagine, but there would be preset colours for the air, particular airline's operation. But uh, Quite an interesting setup on the newer 737s with the sky interior. Yeah. We have a lovely, one of my favourites, A330-200 with the Rolls-Royce oh, how, good, how, good how good is it? Forgive me tonight, everybody, but I'm uh, infixuated on the <laughs> engine types of aircraft. No, we, um, love, we the, love a bit of tech. The A330 carries uh, one of three different types of engines. Uh, what we're seeing there with Hawaiian is the Rolls-Royce Trent 700. And with Malaysian, when it arrived, that had the Pratt & Whitney 4000. Wow. Uh, Qantas, well, you'll notice on them, they have a, a GEC of 680E. Oh, I've just got your noise gate a little bit too high, yeah. But um, I love it I love it when we talk engines, Will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it is quite interesting, you know, why airlines pick engines and, and the, the reasoning behind it and where they're operating the aeroplane and, and what regions of the world they're operating. And it's uh, quite a big thing when an airline purchases an aeroplane, then they've got to decide what engine type they have. Uh, some aircraft like the 737 MAX, of course, you just basically have one type of engine that you want can purchase, but uh, certainly when you get into uh, A330s of the past, you did have a choice of three. So it's quite interesting politics and quite interesting background to the reasonings why okay. airlines get involved in... in that is really interesting, that. actually, yeah. that oftentimes they'll get given the choice, but it, uh, those decisions come down to a multitude of factors. Correct. Um, we're talking about fuel economy, we're yep. talking about, obviously, cost. How you uh, operate your aeroplane is probably one of the biggest and, choices. And perhaps fleet traditions. <laughs> yeah, that can come into it. And then once all that's been decided, then we get politics get involved. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. All right, 
uh, kicking things off today. We've got Herbie the dog. He's here dropping in one dog. <laughs> hey, Herbie the dog. Thanks for your contribution to the show tonight and uh, the first of uh, your super chats there. Kylie Jackie's here saying, uh, finally, I've got enough energy to sit and watch uh, for a bit. It's been a long road of recovery. Wow, Kylie. Well, I'm glad that you're with us here tonight. And uh, happy anniversary to you. 19 months up there in the uh, the Sydney Harbour Suite. And uh, wonderful support of the show. And uh, much love to you, Kylie. And uh, sit back, relax, and uh, grab your, your favourite flavoured beverage and uh, enjoy the, the show with us tonight and uh, Herbie the dog he's back again with a cheeky one good on ya Herbie and uh, plane spotting RS uh, hey Kurt how are you I'm actually at the uh, the 16 right lookout uh, at the moment thanks for the stream Rodeo on oh, g'day Rodeo on how are you mate now the uh, the 16 right lookout if I'm geez now I tried to do this the other day um, it's a long way away down to the southern end of the field there to see the other uh, runway 16 right lookout uh, you're down there somewhere. Uh, all I can say is you're going to get all the aircraft coming head on to you uh, tonight. And uh, enjoy the uh, the view from, from far beyond down over there in the darkness. Look after yourself because it can get quite dark out there. But um, Rodion, I've got to say, mate, appreciate your support on the show tonight. Lovely to have your company here. NG 1232, howdy from Bruce, Sean uh, Manu and uh, Nat in Bondi. Now, I wonder if that's Bruce down south. Or if, or if it is Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, the namesake. Oh, good day. Good day, NG1232. Lovely to have your company. Where are you guys? You're in Bondi tonight. I think last time we chatted, you were over at, um, you're on one of the, you're on Norfolk Island. Was that, was that you guys? I can't remember anymore. But uh, welcome to the show. All the same. And hopefully you guys are doing well tonight. And uh, Alex lives in Australia. Did you know the Qantas 11 changed uh, departed time from morning to late afternoon. The service to Los Angeles, I believe, we're, we're talking about here. It was actually the one we saw depart this afternoon. It's the first 380 I have seen in a number of months. Well, now that is one beautiful aeroplane. Oh, hashtag fluff straight away on the, uh, the leading edge there. You can see that clearly. A lot of humidity in the air tonight here at Sydney Airport, and uh, I suspect that we're going to get a little bit more of that as the, uh, the night progresses. But that's the uh, the UPS 747-400 variant of the uh, the freighter series. No conversions there. <laughs> that is actually a dedicated freighter built uh, specifically as. Um, a lot of people wonder why they have the short upper deck on those uh, aircraft, but that uh, is because the rear stabiliser on the 400 series has a 10-tonne tank, believe it or not. Ah. But the freighters don't have that 10-tonne tank in the rear stabiliser, so to balance it out, they went with the traditional short deck, and that's what designates a freighter. Well, here we go. We're now we've got a, uh, a regional express 737 taxiing down taxiway Charlie, and uh, this service going to Melbourne tonight. Get those camera clicks going. <laughs> Love to hear them. This is what plane spotting is all about. I must say, Kurt, I'm really impressed with uh, Regional Express. I, uh, with the experiences that we've had over the decades with uh, third and fourth airlines starting up in this country. They traditionally haven't lasted too long, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. Rex has been we, going We could just go through the list and name a few. No, yeah, <laughs> let's, was, let's not. <laughs> well, I, I, believe it or not, yesterday I met someone who used to work for Compass, Mark 1 and wow, Mark 2. Do you wow, remember those? Wow, where we are we? We're Compass, we had the, uh, the Ausjet, Jet, we had Impulse, yeah, Impulse Airlines. Yeah. Um, oh, it's just been a turbulent few decades. It has been. But uh, don't you remember Compass with the A300-600 and the A310? And then Compass Mark II with the MD88. No, Regional Express are uh, uh, doing a good thing for the uh, for the country, and um, we've uh, we've got a uh, actually we have Brendan who features on the show quite a lot, who actually works as a, uh, a ground handler there for uh, for Regional Express. He might be here a little bit later on. The uh, the Qantas uh, 330 now Qantas 26 coming in from Japan. This service from Haneda, rolling through there. Three four left. The 332. 332 under beautiful aeroplane CF6 powered GEs. 
with the uh, the uh, the tail painted in the uh, the new livery. Jets our service 988 off to Perth tonight, the 320. Rolling down taxiway Charlie, going down to the south of the field. They've got their uh, their wing lights on there at the leading edge. You'll just see the uh, the shadow of the wing come across in just a moment as they uh, as they turn. But uh, that's what we like to see here at Sid Squad. Is, uh, when they're coming front on, it lights up the uh, uh, the leading edge of the wings so bright. And I, as you would uh, always know, always Kurt always says, lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> now it'll be interesting to see the uh, the heavies that are going out tonight, uh, particularly Emirates, because uh, they sometimes they have them on and sometimes they don't. And it's, uh, it, it's much better for the night show when they're on. Uh, they look amazing lit up. I'm absolutely amazed that uh, Emirates has two A380s leaving pretty much within half an hour of each yeah, other going, going to Dubai. Yeah, going home to Dubai. In, absolutely indeed. fantastic how we're all recovered from COVID. Yeah, well, this is part of this is This yeah. tells the story about exactly. the recovery from COVID. We've yep. got two A380s now that are uh, departing and um, uh, at, at, a, at a peak time. And... Um, we're, we're very lucky. We've got the, uh, the Super Q as well. The Qatari goes out as well. And uh, we will have, we, we should have the A380 coming in from uh, Christchurch uh, a little bit later on tonight as well. So uh, a couple of heavy movements, uh, typically as we see here at, uh, on the night show, the curfew stream, which we're all fond of, which is great. So don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Sit back, relax. Uh, and enjoy the show. There's one of the uh, the uh, Emirates A380s just uh, sitting there quietly in the background, and the other is over at Bay 57. If we just peek around there, uh, doesn't look like we've got any of the new tail liveries in tonight. If we go around a little bit further to left, we've got our Qatari, the other uh, Super Qs sitting over there. Around, I think that's Bay 61. So all to be had out here tonight. Uh, we're looking forward to all their departures. Mitchell Coppy's here for Oscar. Uh, where was my invite? <laughs> Loving the curfew stream, guys. Have you got a reply, Oscar? You can't say anything to that. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> oh, Mitch, how are you, mate? And uh, lovely to have your company here. Thanks for dropping in the five, champ. You're a legend. And uh, hopefully you're doing well, friend. <laughs> I, <do. laughs> I like that. Uh, Jeff Lascock is here. G'day, Jeff. Easter leftovers for dinner, dinner tonight. Well, um, no. In fact, I'm actually celebrating. Uh, I'm actually celebrating Easter with the Fan Bam tomorrow. So that's why I'm out here tonight and able to spend it uh, with everyone. So um, yeah. No, I'll be. Uh, I did uh, uh, Easter on one side of the family yesterday and Easter on the other side tomorrow. And uh, I actually did a bit of flying uh, tonight. Um, tonight earlier actually did a little bit of uh, uh flying uh with nigel tonight and i wonder if nigel will be on the show later we might even have a might even have a chat about it so oh he might hang on just uh give me a check one two no negative stand by one i'll fix you in two hey, seconds uh just give me a sec the uh emirates sky cargo here now it's not currently under tow uh, going to Auckland, so looks like it's going to be making its way past us here, nice and close. Taxiway Charlie, southbound past Shep's, here, uh, Shep's Mound, is going to make a departure out at 1-6 left to go to Auckland, uh, which is good news for us because it's going to be an absolute close. Nice and close. High five the wing light as she goes by. I tell you, it's uh, and, it, and it'll be nice and loud too. Yes. So uh, I was just having a look to see what was going on with the Emirates here, crossing over and up. Well, now I understand. Probably a I see you guys. Family G, we'll catch you later. Safe trip home as well. And I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks for saying hi. Woo. Where's Todd? Is he gone? Where is he? All right. Make sure you say goodbye to him for me. Oh, FedEx 777. Freighter. What a sensation machine. Just about 9 8 contact departure. Right. The triple uh, seven uh, departing uh, there with the uh, FedEx. And then uh, we're going to have a triple uh, seven come past us here up Taxiway Charlie.
I haven't actually seen this for a, uh, a very long time. <laughs> Having a nice 777 come past here on Taxiway Charlie in front of Shep's, uh, Shep's Mound. Wow. Uh, okay, so uh, hold on to your hat. She's going to get loud. <laughs> You uh, would be forgiven to think we're in Dubai at the moment right, with all yes, the Emirates yes. aircraft that no, are around. No, no kidding. <laughs> George O'Saves is up there celebrating uh, six months in the Bondi Beach Cabana. Good on you, George. Welcome back. Jenny Moles is here. Hey, Kurt, perfect. A Kurt view on my 12th month since got anniversary. Love it. Good on you, Jenny. It's been a fun year. I'm so happy I found you guys. Cheers. Oh, Jenny, uh, it's, uh, we're so glad that you're with us. And uh, thanks for uh, returning to the show and enjoying it. And... Um, uh, we'll have you for another year. <laughs> Good on you, Jenny. All right, here we go. You know, it's quiet now, but it it's is coming. Quiet, but she is definitely coming. Doesn't get any better, does it, Kurt? Oh, my word. Being a uh, Sydney local, Kurt, uh, how often does uh, Emirates bring in the Smart Cargo Triple Seven oh, you know, Freighters? You know what? It's like once once a week or twice a week that, yep. I, that I see it. I'm, I'm not out here every day, um, but we feature it probably on the show perhaps maybe once or twice a week or it's uh, every every second week. Now, I did just want to see a uh, cheeky little uh, Dash 8 that's oh. rolled, rolled through there. That is my lovely aeroplane, yeah. And that's probably one of our favourites that we get in Canberra, is uh, we get quite a lot of uh, Q400s. Ah, uh, yes. Um, we now do have the privilege of seeing a, well, the, the two A220s that uh, uh, yeah, Qantas yeah, yeah, Link have yeah, just yeah. received, but they're a regular in and out of Canberra. Uh, yeah, because they're, they're running on the Canberra, Melbourne and the Brizzy services, correct. right? Correct, oh, yeah. Gotcha. And we, we get our fair share of 737-8s, yep. uh, 737-700s as yep, well. Yep. Love and, the, uh, the baby Boeings. And the occasional 320. Uh, but other surprises in and out of Canberra, we, we get a lot of government aircraft visiting right. uh, our government. So yes. we get to see, you know, Japan Airlines 747 or uh, Vietnam 787, which passed through Canberra yep. and stayed overnight. So that was all quite a treat going out and seeing that. We don't get the wide-bodied stuff there very often. And on occasion, we just get some good military stuff come through, uh, C-17s and K-30s. A well, cu couple of, uh, couple of uh, well, growlers last week, was Yeah, it? Super oh, Hornets geez. were in. Yeah. That uh, made everybody's day and no doubt. brought the spotters out from the woodwork. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, Exactly. Did you pull your camera out, Will? No, well, I'm not the best photographer in the world, I must confess. I did uh, do a lot of um, uh, Instagram a few years ago, yeah. but I, I sort of waned off that a little bit but no most of my aviation enthusiastic uh, interests have been in my career as a licensed aircraft engineer so do, do you know what they will it is it is good to just appreciate it by watching it exactly. right, rather than picking up the camera and uh, getting in there because you know oftentimes I say I say you miss the moment you very much do capture the moment when you're photographing but I mean to take it all in is uh, also just as important exactly. Jetstar A320, Jetstar 988, off to Perth. I think for me, one of the greatest things about spotting is just to simply catch up with friends and socialise oh, and uh, yeah, indeed. talk aeroplanes indeed. and share news and information and and just in, you know embrace young people who want to get involved in the industry and give yeah. them some direction and and uh, some you know, and some guidance of how to go about it. Hello, Emma. Welcome back. We've got to get Will on the mic more often. Oh, there we go. It started, it started now, Will. Now, I well, have... Well, Will will be our guest appearance whenever he's up from Canberra. I can happily say that. I'm, I'm more than welcome to have Will here. We would be delighted. Now, I have just been saying before, we have three A330 sitting here, and you have an engine choice when you purchase A330s. So, Malaysian, we have the Pratt & Whitney. Qantas, we have the CF6, General Electric CF6, and... 
Uh, is that China? So we got that one there, yep. and then we got that one there. That one there. And, uh, well, we got one more to go. Hang on. Which uh, is the Rolls-Royce Trent 700. Well, that one there. Yeah. So if you, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how far you can zoom in, Kurt. Yeah, but what do you want to look at, Will? Let's have a geezer. So if we can look at... We'll, uh, go, we'll go Malaysian, right? Malaysian. And, uh, we'll go in here and have a, have, um, a, have a quick... Fortunately, the fuel truck's blocking the Pratt 4000 up a little bit, but... Uh, yeah, if you can, it's sort of a more stubbier style of engine. Um, really, quite a robust engine, actually, out of the out of the series. And if we go over to the Qantas, you'll see a nice big spike, which we call the exhaust plug, and that's a GFC G, a CFC. Sorry, I get my tongue tied tonight. A GF GE CF six eighty E. And then if we crawl, scroll over to the Chevron Airlines. 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 Oh, yeah, it's that's totally different, different again. Yeah, and that's your Rolls-Royce Trent 700. And yes. I, personally, I have a license on the GE and the Rolls-Royce. I don't have the Pratt & Whitney on my A330 license, but uh, I think the better engine, personally, uh, the one I haven't touched the most because I haven't had to, has been the Trent 700. Well, you know what's going to be interesting to you? I, I hope that you're still here when we do get a bit of engine glow tonight because then you'll be able to tell us which engine we get uh, we get the mo <laughs> we get the most out of, the most engine glow. And Craig Murray's there. You can respond to that, Craig, Will, for sure. it is absolutely sensational seeing your name here. And I was just mentioning you to Kurt uh, earlier this afternoon and uh, I said to Kurt to say hi to you. Well, now... But, uh, <laughs> I can say hi to you now. How you been? And uh, next time I'm up in Brisbane, I'll definitely come up and say, Say good day. We've got to get in touch, and this is absolutely fantastic, Kurt. You know, we've we we just reconnect after decades, oh, yeah. and it's yeah. like it's yesterday. It's well, how long would it have been since you've caught up with Craig? I'd say probably 15 years ago. Wow. I could yeah. be wrong. Time flies. Um, yeah. But yeah, look, I probably hadn't seen Craig for a good 15 years. Wow. I think it was up in Brisbane the last time we caught up. Well, there you go. Yeah, but we will definitely catch up again. That's that's fantastic. Good to have you here, Craig. The mu the Muzz dog is in the house. Uh, we've got a uh, a message coming in from uh, uh, Mark Olson here. He's put himself up there in the Sydney Harbour Suite, and uh, good on you, Mark. Thank you for all your support uh, uh, and and seeing value in the membership and getting yourself all the way at the pointy end of the uh, the Sid Squad fan bam. Now you'll get your name on the ticker for the next live show and um, uh, also access to all the emojis and the members only content from time to time. We've actually got to dedicate a uh, a movement to you, and um, I'm. Just having a look uh, on, on inbounds at the moment. Um, we've got um, a Singapore 7460, next major heavy coming in from, uh, and that's a Sin Cargo 777. Uh, that is the um, uh, the uh, the white livery with the yellow DHL tail. Uh, we've got China Southern coming in from Guangzhou as well to Sydney. Uh, for a departure though, mate, I think uh, I think there's a Qantas aircraft that was just doing a bit of a, uh, it popped up on uh, radar. There we go. And just off to our left here, we have the retro roof from the 1970s. Oh, let's just uh, pan the camera Z around and have a good. It is uh, XZP. Oh, look, and how nice does that look under the uh, the, light, the night lighting here that tonight? That is fantastic. And I really love that era, the 1970s. Uh, it's uh, probably one of my favourites, certainly what we grew up with, with the old 7.4s, and you know, I think the 7.0s wore that colour scheme for a little bit as well. Wow, it just comes out. Yep. Love the interior there. I do have a funny story about that aeroplane, and you can see the sky interior with the blue or purple lighting. But that aeroplane is the youngest in the Qantas fleet, XZP, and when it was uh, delivered, brand new, um, it pulled up at the gate in Sydney for its first revenue flights, and in the retro colours, yes. to celebrate the 70s colours, and some passengers went up and said, uh, can I catch the next flight, because I want to go on the new aircraft <laughs> next to it. <laughs> thinking it was well, hang old, on a second. <laughs> it was an old aeroplane, but no, it is absolutely brand new. I think she's about eight years old now. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, youngest 737-800 in Qantas's fleet. Well, there you go. Uh, it is nine years old as we there speak. We go. Yeah, November 2014. Time flies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, pulling that out of the hat uh, at uh, at short notice to get the uh, the age was uh, it was quite impressive. Uh, well done. Um, it, nicely done. Now the um, I, I was just having a look to see. I, I don't rem I don't recall the flight number. Is this? Do you know what uh, aircraft this is departing at the moment? Uh, <laughs> that would be obviously a I know 787. It's a 7, I know it's a 787. I've just, I don't have the data tag at the moment. No, let me um, have a little look. But somebody else will uh, be smarter than that. And uh, Craig just uh, dropped a DM for me and said, make sure you say a lot of will for me. So there you go. <laughs> awesome, Craig. Yeah, that's brilliant. My, uh, Matt has gone ahead and gifted five cents. What? Oh, 50. What? 50? 50. Oh, my gosh. That is sensational. Oh, somebody has broken the chat tonight. <laughs> well, Matt, that is absolutely quite the generous donation to the show tonight, buddy. Dro dropping 50 gifted. I haven't got all those names up on the screen at the moment. The chat is flying tonight. I've got to say, everybody go into the chat and give Matt some love because that is 
Absolute Maggie. Mega. Uh, Nigel, give me two sacks. Sorry, I forgot. I've, I've just got to try and fix that. Uh, I, I will get it up and running. Give me two sacks. Okay. Um, uh, Uh, can you say hello? Give me a check, check. Check one, two. Ah, check one, two. Now I've got Nigel on the show. Will, say hello to Nigel. Nigel, how are you going? Well, <laughs> mate, I'm well, thanks. She's, I, I was just saying to Craig Murray on a little side chat. Yep. Far out, it's been a long time since I heard your name. Jeez. <laughs> Holy moly, how you been? Yes, no, pretty good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I found my way out here today, so... Um, yes. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Well done. Um, Kurt, if you want me to quickly run through 50 names, I can do it. In uh, a hurry. I, I, um, I, I, uh, have you got them all in front of you? How quick can you I, go, Nigel? <laughs> mate, well, good we luck. Got, good uh, luck to you. Friends, my Van Heerden, Herbie the Dog, Con Raptors, James, Scott Butler, Colin Harris, uh, James Cridlin, uh, Mick has been given one as well. Reed Ronfield, Walter Crowell, uh, Ryan Dewitt has got one. Um, Alan Speak, Mike G. Geez, what have we got? Annie T, Calabrosi, uh, looks like. Um, Dino's got one. Uh, Climbers to you. Um, Scott Steiner's got one. Scott Steiner. Holy moly. Uh, Kekka Beam. Uh, what have we got? Val Creek College. Uh, Keith B. I know, mate. Karen's got one as well. Uh, Vivek has got one. Uh, Vivek Vemela Conda is his surname there. I hope I got that right. Uh, Marco Lauer. Neil Parsons, uh, 01 Mike D, got one as well. Uh, Bing Lamb, got one. Uh, Nick S, Jorg, got one. Uh, Daniel Sloggett, got one. Eddie Hardigan, oh, it must be nearly halfway there, surely. <laughs> Heart of, Heart of Naren, and Naren got one, sorry. Um, Charlie's got one. Young Link got one. Jeez. Wow. Where we go? Catherine Norman got one. You guys. Nice to have you here, Catherine. Uh, Stuart Marshall, welcome aboard. Mark P, Wesley Cooper, Aussie Bandit, uh, Joseph Hanlon, you got one as well, congratulations. I think you're, um, I think you're just reading out the I, entire chat there, Nigel. <laughs> Ian Bell, Ty Tony, Martin Getting, Alvin, uh, Andrew Colvin, I should say. Um, where we've got da uh, Darren McDonald, and I think that's about it. No, there's Martin Organ as well. <laughs> I think I think what we'll, I think what we'll do what we'll do next time is just encourage the uh, the fifty the fifty members to uh, head on over to their email because they will actually get a notification that they've been gifted a membership. And, the last um, one is Army Andy seventy two. <laughs> so there you go, Kirby. You got it all. Matt Matt's a legend for doing that, and um, and uh, welcome uh, to all the new members here of the Sit Squad fan band. And uh, it's lovely to have you come. You go give Matt some love. <laughs> We just saw the beautiful DHL Singapore 777 yeah. freighter roll through, and we've got uh, the Qantas 787 9, which is ZNN, which is one of their brand new ones. Yeah, so she should be shiny. Very shiny. <laughs> Looks pretty good from here, I've got to say. <laughs> but um, that is a, it is a quite a financial contribution to be dropping 50 gifted memberships to the show. So I did just want to make a special mention of that. So well done, Matt. I, I appreciate that. It's very, very kind. Never any obligation, but, um, you know, well received all the same. So thank you, mate. A message coming in here from uh, Palabellum uh, Collectibles. Uh, shout out to Raf. Uh, happy birthday, legends. Shout out to the Raf. Is, that, uh, is there something there that I don't know about? Uh, is it their birthday? Is it happy birthday, legends? Well, there you go. Parabellum Collectibles dropping in a two. Good on you, mates. Lovely to uh, have a nice uh, message like that. Uh, Lila Larkins here uh, from Hannah and the family. Oh, thank you for meeting us. So young Hannah and um, I forget her brother's name. Uh, Sa uh, Thomas. Yes, Thomas. It was young young Hannah, Hannah and Thomas were here. And um, lovely to have them here on the show uh, as we were setting up actually this evening. And they came up and they said hello. They're from Goulburn and they wanted to make sure that they said hello. And uh, much love to those guys and a wonderful family. No doubt they're in the car on the way home now. And the kids in the back seat with their watching mobile phones watching yeah. us live. <laughs> so um, hello, kids. I mean, hasn't the world changed a lot? <laughs> it has. It has you. indeed. I mean, imagine doing this 30 years ago. Yeah, you know, it just exactly. Possible, right? You know? You've said it. You've said it. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, just give us two seconds there. We're going to um, drop off uh, and uh, just chat with a couple of people here, and uh, we'll be back with you in just a moment. Contact ground, one, two, six, decimal, five. 
Sorry, Will. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's fantastic meeting the people. Oh, Jack, this guy, he's here. G'day, Jack. Hello, mate. Hello, Lovely to see you, my friend Jack. This is Will and uh, and Oscar, from, these guys from Canberra. Nice yeah, Jack's a uh, good friend of the channel here from the uh, from the back from the backstage crew, <laughs> or the behind the scenes crew, I should say. China Southern, 787, looking sensational. Yeah, in from Guangzhou, China Southern, 301. And uh, we, were, we were still chasing our, uh, our 787. This is uh, the service off to Honolulu tonight, the 103. I was mentioning before that uh, as a Canberra spotter, uh, we also enjoyed the, the 717s. Uh, that, that is our central hub for that aircraft. Um, I collectively call them the DC-9 Neo because effectively <laughs> it is a DC-9 with new engines. And, um, but uh, we're just having two of those retire. Uh, NXN has retired and YQX, I think, uh, retired yesterday. Performed its last flight from possibly Sydney down back down to Canberra. So, yeah, another two down, which is sad to see them go. Now, Will, you, you generally compete with the, uh, the Saab 340s as they, as they come past us here at Charlie because they're so damn loud. Yeah. <laughs> You're still there, Nigel? I sit there. Oh, lovely, lovely. I was telling you, I was telling the viewers that I went for a fly earlier today. I think you heard that. <laughs> and and I did, I and I, I I actually would have been out here on the uh, the live show a little bit earlier than I was tonight, but I needed I needed a recovery sleep. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a tiring flight, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Now, what was the reason for that? <laughs> well, I don't know, man. Uh, look, we're just looking at. Um, We'll look at the all -all -coast line. In a slightly different perspective. <laughs> yes, now let's so, just yeah. say that uh, Kurt went on a, uh, a flight this afternoon with Nigel at the controls, and uh, we were in a, uh, we were in a, uh, what well, we were in a super decathlon, Nigel. That's it, yeah, mate, super decathlon, a uh, lovely 2022 model, so, uh, all right, as good as new, and, um, yeah, beautiful aircraft to fly. And um, we, so we, we did a joy flight, basically, out of Camden. Nigel at the controls, Kurt in the back seat, and uh, then Nigel decided, well, you know what? Uh, we're going to do some uh, aerobatics. <laughs> That's all right. I, um, I, held, I, held my, I held my own, didn't I, Nigel? I, did, I think I went all right. I think I went OK. <laughs> uh, mate, I think you did exceptionally well, actually. I reckon you went really well. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you weren't so keen on any shenanigans on the way home. You were kind of... Uh... <laughs> yeah, by the end of the flight, I, by the end of the flight, let's say, I was a little bit mellow. But I... Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, it's like trying to do one last slow roll, Kurt. Uh, no, it's all right. No, man. no, we're good. The, the, <laughs> although the, um, the, 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 ri the river run at 800 feet uh, home was probably almost, well, not, well, well, just to add to one of the favourite parts of the, uh, of the flight, I've got to say. Oh, mate, right, that's it. Yeah, it was, um, it's a great little run, that one, isn't it? Now, uh, nice and low on the way back into the Nigel, Nigel tells me that um, we actually uh, pulled uh, 5G. Uh, at some time uh, throughout our flight, and that would have been on one of the uh, on one of the loops. Was that night? <laughs> yeah, it's um, either the loop or um, maybe one of the uh, um, half Cubans pulling out through that. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't have any records. Right. <laughs> but, uh, Just two mentioning tells me that uh, that we gave it a good uh, good nudge. Just good mentioning you did five Gs. I've already done my back in thinking about it. Yeah, well, I mean, well, let's just talk about that for a second. Let's put it into perspective. I mean, is I mean, t tell me about tell me about pulling five Gs. Is that is that like uh is is that a fair crack or is that like you know that's five, man yeah, up, come on five, that's not really much five. at all. I, I don't really know like. You know, five's a five's a pretty good crack. Um, normally in a loop, you'd sort of pull three and a half, four. Um, oh yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it might have been one of the moves where I had to get a bit more speed up, so it probably felt a bit more G through the seat. But so we're, we're doing it, sixty-five it, it, knots it, here, Will, and yep. then Nigel goes, "Look, we've just got to get a little bit more airspeed. Nose down. We've just within seconds we're at one hundred and forty-five knots." And I'm like, "Oh damn, here we go, here we go!" And then, <laughs> and then bang, and he's just pulling it up, and he's like, "Look left, look left," and I'm like, I, "I've got to find my tummy, Nigel. I've got to find my tummy." <laughs> yeah, the, 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 G's, the, the G's aren't sustained, so it's it's like 
fine. It gets out of the way fairly quickly, I suppose. <laughs> but, uh, I had an absolute, but, uh, I had an absolute ball this afternoon, Nigel. So, oh, so I'm, I'm glad you had fun. Thank you for, uh, thank you for uh, taking us uh, on that wonderful flight. Hang on, I'm juggling, I'm juggling all sorts of stuff here. Have we got a, have we got a? Is that coming in? A special jet coming in? Another sit squad corporate jet rolling in on three, four left in just a moment. So it's a Global Express. Um, I don't know about the, uh, I don't know about the uh, the route here, but uh, looks like we've got a. An yeah, unroad. that would be her. And that yeah. would be her coming in. All right, so it should be interesting to see under lights. Okay, so special movement coming now in on uh, runway three, four left. Now the chat's flying. I got to get, I got to get my head down and stuck into into the chat because you guys are going bananas and I'm I'm falling way behind here. So uh, let's give me a sec and I'll uh, I'll just do a, a quick run through and uh, try and get some sort of normality back into the show. We're having too much fun here. So. <laughs> Karen Glenn's here and she's saying, "Yay, I made it to two years. Thank you guys so much." Well, Karen, 24 months. You're almost part of the furniture. Well, you are part of the furniture. Karen, and we love having you here, so thank you for being here. Bondi Steve out there at Paris here. G'day, dropping in a five. G'day, Steve, hopefully you're doing well again tonight. Thanks for uh, the contribution to the show, appreciate that. As always, mate, you're always here. And uh, Chewy uh, plays is here. Good day from Darwin. Oh, g'day, Chewy. Thanks for dropping in the two, mates. Appreciate your uh, support of the live show, and welcome to Sid Squad tonight. Thanks for being here, mate. We should have that global coming yeah, up very shortly. Yeah, it'll come behind the trees in just a moment. Yeah, it was something I prepared for you earlier. <laughs> Shirley Burton is here. Happy or hoppy Easter to all. Unfortunately, I'm spending it. Oh, no, with COVID. Oh, no, don't no. worry. I'm resting comfortably and keeping hydrated. I'll get better. Oh, Shirley. I'm so sorry to hear those details. Oh, gosh. Rest up, Shirley. You'll get through it. Oh, oh there's well, the global. Wow, look at that. Yeah, that looks nice. Got a spare eighty-five million dollars? You can buy yourself on. No those. kidding, <laughs> no kidding. Eighty-five, eh? Yeah, about eighty-five million. Right, okay, all right. I'll just check the back pocket. <laughs> My word. Maybe with tonight's chat, you might get there. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. We don't. We don't encourage that. We. Um, <laughs> We're, we're, we're <laughs> certainly very humble about our um, now, our donations to the show and very appreciative of the fact. Obviously, there's no obligation, but we certainly really do appreciate everyone's wonderful support. And, uh, uh, yeah, well, let's just take a cheeky peek. What do you reckon? Oh, look at that, yes. Um, uh, VP, I'm just trying to recall where VP is from, the registration. Uh, good question, good hmm. question. Maybe someone in the chat could look that up and let us know quickly. Yeah, because if we just have a look to the back end of the aircraft there, it's uh, VP. Yeah, it almost could be confused to think it as VH, H. but yeah. Charlie Papartango. And 1131 on the uh, on the engines there. Pretty schmick looking jet, if you uh, if you ask me. It is nice. Yeah. The old Sid Squad corporate jet. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of just bucket them all into one category, you see. There's, uh, there's uh, so many. All right, just, uh, just coming up now, Taxiway Charlie, we've got a corner 737. Uh, this service is 842, going to Darwin. Wow, lots of Darwin on the show at the moment. Uh, good old VXB, which is uh, one of the original 737-800s with Qantas. Uh, that aircraft is definitely 22 years old. Wow, there you go. All right, Drew's here. And Drew's saying, hey, guys, wow, what a beautiful stream. Oh, thank you, Drew. And uh, nine months up there in the Sydney Harbour Suite. Have a great day of uh, plane spotting. Oh, good on you, Drew. Thank you, mate, for your support. Appreciate you being here, Bates. Welcome back. Oh, here we go, Will. Uh, yep. Yeah, thanks for everyone sending in from Bermuda. The VP is from Br Bermuda, so or Cayman Islands. Oh, there you go. She's definitely a long way from home. Hashtag yeah. tax dodge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Karen in the chat there, Kurt says, uh, sounds like a lot of fun, tempting her to get back up in the decathlon. You know what, Karen, do it. Just do it. You know you want to. 
Yeah, Cayman Islands for the uh, the global that went past before. Uh, VP's Bermuda. Um, good tax dodge for all those uh, who don't mind squirrelling their money away. Governments aren't normally that great in spending it anyway. Uh, Yvonne, uh, <laughs> Yvonne Shane. That says Kurt was a little green. Actually, Kurt, he handled it pretty well today, I actually thought. Um, I've had a little look at some of the video from, that I took from the flight, and um, Kurt went pretty well with that. He'll be back, I hope. Oh, look, we're just taking a lull there in the uh, the movements just to uh, say hello to some uh, lovely people have come to uh, give us some donuts here on the other uh, live stream Isn't tonight. That fabulous. People just coming up wanting to say good day. It, it is. Will, I know, I know, just I, beautiful. I know what's going on with your bottom line because you'll be uh, you'll be taking all those donuts home, you see. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have a three hour drive home tonight, so yeah, well, they'll probably come in handy. <laughs> i got to say a special thanks to everybody for coming out to say hello here tonight. And, um, and if you are coming out to say hello, don't be afraid. Come and uh, give us a tap on the shoulder and uh, um, and uh, we'll absolutely spend some time and say hello to you all. We um, we absolutely love building the community yeah. at Sid Squad. It's what it's all about, and um, uh, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. All right, where, where, where was I? I got uh, back the on big the fellas here. Oh, happy Easter, boys. Yes, good on you, big fella. Message coming in there from Nicholas uh, Commonsolly. Uh, so spoiled with these Easter streams. Yeah, we've done a few, haven't we? What are we doing? <laughs> My son got a gaming headset for his 10th birthday. His first comment was, I can do a Kurt for you. <laughs> Bad influence. Um, yes, yeah, well, now you can listen to Kurt in uh, uh, at night time in, in the, the comfort of your own bed without disturbing the rest of the family. <laughs> but I would encourage you to put it on the uh, the big screen in the living room, of course, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> and we have ZZ, ZNN yeah, that's for our, Honolulu. Yeah, our new shiny 787 aircraft. Look at that. A little bit of, uh, uh, little bit of vortices coming off the leading edge there on the inside. Nice now, to see. It's amazing what you see. First of all, you're seeing the vortices come off the top of the wing, which is a real good representation of how an aeroplane actually flies. That is the negative pressure on top of the wing. You can actually see it. And that's what makes an aeroplane fly. Some of you noticed also on takeoff, we noticed what we call brake dust coming out of the landing gear. And you probably see that more in your day streams. Yep. But I did notice that very quickly in the reflection of the light. Now, when an aircraft puts its landing gear up, it actually has to apply about 500 psi of brake pressure to the wheels to stop them spinning. Right, before they tuck them in. Before they tuck them in, because the last thing you want is, your, is, a, is a shredded tyre oh, right. spinning inside the structure oh, of the aeroplane. I so. actually understand that. <laughs> and the other thing, you also got gyroscopic, gyroscopic forces. So if you're having a spinning object and you're trying to push it sideways, you can actually do some damage to the gear. So when you slick gear up, you, the brakes come on a little bit. And if you noticed on the 330, sometimes you notice they keep the gear down after takeoff. Yeah, for, for a little bit of time. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of people think that's due to brake temperature, but that is actually also we can what we call MEL a brake on an A330. We can lock it out. But the problem is, is when you slick gear up, if yes. the brake's not working, we have to allow it to spin down. So what they do is they leave the gear down for three minutes to allow the wheel to spin down before they so, select gear so up. So we should be seeing that more more prominently on, a, on an A330. Pretty aircraft. much on an A330, the 767, you could also ML a brake. And any particular variant or? or no. Or, okay. Yep. Um, yeah. 74, A380, you can yep. also ML brakes because you have a number of redundant brakes. Uh, you certainly can't do it on a on a four-wheel aircraft, so to speak, like a 737 or an A320. But well, there you go, team. There's something new. We're learning something every day. Johnny Vogel's here. Happy Easter, uh, all. And Simply Marvellous, Kurt, as always. Oh, good on you, Johnny. Thanks for the two tonight, mate. I appreciate that. Sharon's here as well. Hi, Kurt, and uh, happy bunny day. Where's the hopping dance? No, 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 no hopping dancers here. you got to go to Adelaide for that. <laughs> the boys here in Adelaide will look after you, no doubt. And the Kate Chidiak is here. Happy Easter, Kurt. Love you. Oh, good on you, Kate. Love you more. <laughs> Thank you for your three-month support. And uh, we got a message now coming in from uh, Flux. And uh, oh, look at there that, goes our Darwin flight. Bit of flux straight across the screen there. Welcome to the Bondi Beach Cabana. Good on you, Flux. Thanks for your support of the Sid Squad family tonight. And uh, appreciate you uh, being here. And uh, hopefully you're enjoying the uh, the show. Yeah, that's the other service off to Darwin there, Will. Out the door. And uh, Benny's here, uh, Brad, sorry, up there at uh, four months there in the lodge. Good on you, Brad. Thanks for your support. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Simon's here this time. Okay, so the A220s are the best-looking commercial frame, in my opinion. I'm into them. As, I'm into those aesthetics. So balanced. Uh, been following the development for years. I, 
I'm I'm a fan too. Yep. I, I like the I like the next gen A three fifty niners. Do like the A two twenties, and then I'll go as far as say the E one nineties is kind of like the uh, if you go A three fifty, A two twenty, and then the E one ninety is like the baby of them all. It's oh, like yeah. that similar for me. Those are those fuselages, the aesthetics for me work really really they well. They do look very good. And, <laughs> and look, and what gets me nowadays, Kurt, is how quiet these things are. Do you remember the seven two seven days? Uh, well, in... Nigel would remember the <laughs> seven two seven days as well. Actually, Sorry, from a what? visual perspective, I can't hear you. <laughs> 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 but look, it's amazing how quiet they are. We just had an A321 Neo taxi by uh, earlier this afternoon, and I was just commenting. You, you can hold a conversation as these aeroplanes taxi by nowadays. Yes. They're just so quiet. Indeed. It's, it's incredible. Oh, good on you, Simon. Yeah, the 727s were not only loud, but they also used to leave a uh, nice prominent... <laughs> but pa they painted the sky, sky so to speak. Yeah, they <laughs> nah, they were absolutely fantastic machines. Really uh, enjoyed the 727 and did a, quite a few flights on them myself, actually. Did you really? Yeah. Now, you're not yeah. telling your age at all. Okay, no. Well, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sam out of focus. He's here out there in the Bondi Beach cabana for three months. Good on you, Sam. Love to have your company. Welcome back. Uh, Jonathan Train Vlogs, young fella. Hey, Kurt, what time? Uh, me and where will you be next stream? Good question, Johnny Chains Vlogs. Um, look, as you know, we do these live shows uh, in our spare time. It's a hobby for us, although there there is a sneaky suspicion there may be a live show on the Sid Squad channel tomorrow and uh, we I'm not sure whether that's going to be at Sydney Airport or uh, Gold Coast Airport. Uh, what I will say is if you haven't already perhaps consider subscribing to the channel make sure you're across all the details about when we go live next and uh, and also hit that bell notification button so you don't miss out. Uh, Jonathan good to have you back mate uh, hopefully you're doing well buddy and uh, oh Willie Hale out there at Emu Plains at the foot of the mountains he's here and he's part of the furniture Willie a very proud member, 26 months of the best aircraft streaming there is. You're very kind, Will. It is actually sensational streaming, sensational work you're doing here, Kurt. I appreciate I that, mate. really love it. It's it's fantastic. Well, and thank you for being here. Now you get to see you. the uh, the uh, you know the full setup and what goes into putting on the show for our wonderful uh, Sid Squad fam bam. And uh, we're just out here with our old uh, iPhone 15 Pro Maxi Bond Plus, uh, bringing the coverage to the world, <laughs> and, our, and our and our sticks. <laughs> and speaking of the world, Kurt, I mean, we were talking about it before. I mean, you, spotting Willie. is uh, a global thing. You know, we Isn't meet it? people from all around the world, and it is great that you know you've you've got 1,800 viewers right now. Yeah, wow. If you are wherever you are in the chat, let us know where you're watching this stream from, and yeah, uh, here be we interesting go. to see. The 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 I was going to say, how's your geography? Because no, no <laughs> doubt it's about to, no doubt it's about to come across your screen. How to get tested? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, it is. It's a um, well. Aviation is very much a wide world thing, and um, you know we're all about building the community here, and we're so thankful that we've got um, you know uh, supporters of the show from uh, wide and far, and it's uh, lovely to have all of your company. So, uh, welcome to the uh, the Kurt View show tonight. It's um, we uh, will be live uh, at least for the next two hours and fourteen minutes as we make our way through to uh, 11 p.m. local here when the curfew does kick in at Sydney Airport, and that's when all the planes, all the RPT services go Betty bye byes. Uh, not too sure if we're going to get any movements uh, thereafter. The, the 146s are probably not operating uh, over the week, or they, I dare say they're not operating over the weekend, uh, and uh, especially given it's Easter, it's probably going to be a pretty quiet top end as we get closer to that uh, that curfew moment. Here we go, Kurt. We've got some people coming in from all we'll across get... the planet. Newcastle, UK, Plymouth, UK. We've got people from all around Australia. I want, New exotic, Zealand. I want exotic, Will. <laughs> Give me exotic. We've got someone from Antarctica. Antarctica. <laughs> come, on, come on, man. Watching from London. Ruchi door, Armadale. Oh, you guys. Ah. And wow, Canberra, the, of course. The chat is just going bonkers here. Right in UK. Concord, <laughs> California, oh, USA. Wow. Oh, wow. Erskineville, home ground. Good on you, Matty. <laughs> Maroubra. Yeah, good on you, Willie. Wollongong. Uh, West Cornwall, United Kingdom. We've got a lot of people from the UK. Lithgow. Which is Lithgow. There you go. Dave C in Lithgow. Love that. Rugby, United Kingdom. Sunny uh, Coast. Good on you, Lynn. Sel uh, Salvador, oh, Brazil. Brazil. Hello there. <laughs> Fantastic. How goes that? Oh, Malaysia. Golgong, New South Wales. That's yep. uh, regional. Love that. Melbourne, yes. Yeah, we get a lot of, a lot of Melbourne. Arizona, Japan. Ah, uh, yes. Yep. Campbelltown, New South Wales. Ireland. Arizona. Uh, Phoenix, yes. Arizona. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Southern Highlands. Oh, beautiful, oh. beautiful part of the world, Vicky. <laughs> Someone's from Area 51, of course. Someone's <laughs> from Area 51. <laughs> Good on you, James, you cheeky devil. <laughs> ring a ding ding. <laughs> no, that is fantastic. And look, that represents, you know, what we're all about and how we all... 
as a community, get together and just enjoy spotting and enjoy aeroplanes. I'll and tell you what, the chat's alive and well. They're healthy. It is they fantastic. are healthy. <laughs> well, um, moving right along, I've got a, uh, I've got a message now coming in from uh, Matthew uh, Claremont. Great pictures of great aircraft. I'm very envious. I'll get on you, Matthew. Well, you know what? Uh, we'll keep bringing you these wonderful pictures, uh, courtesy of the Sid Squad uh, live show. So glad that you're part of it. Oh, Willie's back again. Dropping in a big 2 0. <laughs> Good on you, Willie. Wonderful support, as always, as you know, mate. And make sure you say hello to, uh, to Kay for us. Good on you, Will. And uh, Jeff Lascock has upgraded the membership there to the Gold Coast Penthouse. Good on you, Jeff. And uh, Ken Bates has put himself there into the Bondi Beach Cabana. Good on you, Ken. Welcome to Sid Squad. And Jack's Aviation, great stream. I saw you on your Friday stream at Shep's Mound during the day. Uh, I didn't want to disturb you. I hope Tim got the uh, A319 safety. Oh, yeah, Jack. Well, he hasn't got it yet because I haven't seen him in the person yet. But, um, yeah, big shout-out to you, Jack, for coming in and, and saying hello and uh, and dropping that off. And I'll, I'm absolutely going to pass that on to him. And uh, I know that um, I think you guys have been chatting about that. So, yeah, for sure, indeed, he'll get it, And um, which is which is brilliant, mate. So thanks for popping by and... Um, and for, for bringing that out for uh, for Tim and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll when I see him next, which I'm actually not too sure when. I think he's back on uh, Tuesday, uh, back at the farm. That, that's correct, isn't it, Nigel? <laughs> sorry, mate. I was just uh, busy with something else. Again. Oh yeah, just having a snooze, no <laughs> doubt. Sorry. <laughs> Tim, Tim, back at the back at the farm on um, on Tuesday, I think. Yes. Yep, All indeed. Right. Yep. Next to go out is our uh, Air China friends going home to Beijing. It's the uh, the 787 Dreamliner currently taxiing down Alpha, making a full-length departure there. Uh, they'll be going in at Alpha 6, and uh, we'll see them go uh, in about uh, 10 minutes' time. All right, a couple of membership anniversaries. We're going to rip through these. Uh, Scott Shalcross up there in the Bondi Beach Cabana, 22 months. Happy days. Josh Hill putting himself there in the Bondi Beach Cabana. Good on you, Josh. Oh, Amy Preston, welcome to the lodge. Amy, dedicating Air China to you and uh, access to all the, the emojis there and the members only content. Good on you, Amy. Lovely to have your company. Greg Roberts. Oh, good on you, Greg. Oh, Medivac traffic. You can expect to depart after traffic currently on a 10 mile final. A 10 mile final, as the Kiwi says. Love it. Medivac traffic. All right. PC24 Pilatus. Yeah, and I love the PC24. Great airframe, that one as well. Oh, Greg, mate, thanks for seeing value in the membership there, putting yourself all the way at the pointy end. And um, we'll, we'll also dedicate the Air China service to you. So any, uh, any other membership dedications coming in now? We've got Air China coming up in just a moment. Batch Motorsport, welcome to the uh, the penthouse. Well done, Batch Motorsport. Charlene Beasley's here. Always good to see a Kurt View stream. Oh, you know what's good for you, Charlene. Love it. Thank you for your support. Seven months in the lodge. Nancy's there in the Bondi Beach Cabana. Good on you, Nance. Thank you so much. And uh, Michael Cadell dropping in a cheeky five. Good on you, uh, Michael. Thank you for your support tonight. Hopefully you're doing well. How are you? Enjoying the show, hopefully. And uh, lovely to have your company as well. Oh, Batch is back. Dropping in a tenner. Shout out to Shrubsy for getting me into the uh, the Sid Squad life. Oh, there you go. We've got a... Shrubsy's a great man. I, I met Shrubsy down at the uh, the Wollongong or the uh, Albion Park or the Schlaber Air Show. <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it, Nigel. Or air shows down under. But uh, we, had a great, we had a great day down there uh, a couple of weeks back at the, uh, at the air show. And uh, we caught up with Shrubsy. And, uh, well, how good is that that Shrubsy has uh, had a, um, an impact there on you guys, uh, Batch Motorsport, for tuning in. So, uh, mate, thank you for that, and uh, we're happy to have you. <laughs> I know Will can't get a word in just at the moment, but I've got to rip through the chat here, and no, we'll, we'll catch up a bit. Oz to goes here. Hiya, everyone. I've had a look at the, uh, the new, new airport on the way home from a dog show yesterday. Looking good. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not only looking good, but it's looking big. Um, it's, uh, I think it's about a 40 kilometre round trip uh, around the entire um, airfield, a uh, 45 kilometre round trip, I think, of the entire airfield out there at uh, Western Sydney. So landmass is, uh, is, is massive. <laughs> How would it look for spotting at the new airfield? Have you got any um, insight there? To, to, to be seen. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have, I, it, okay, so they've got one runway at the moment mm -hmm. um, and um, Nigel and I will, will argue that they probably should have had two. <laughs> I know they're going to have two, but they would have been great to do it at the same time. Um, so from a, pot a spotting perspective, it's unknown at the moment because um, obviously the airport is what's been focused on, but there's the, the, the surrounings and the, the infrastructure around that hasn't yet come to fruition. 
a good spot might be where the current information centre is, where the um, where, where headquarters is for the new Western Sydney Airport is. Um, and uh, so that would be sort of mid or two thirds of the way down the uh, the main runway there. Um, so that would be side on. But uh, I can assure you, Will, that um, uh, Western Sydney Airport are keen to have us out there. Oh, that's um, excellent And, news. and, and uh, you know, we're, we're looking forward to bringing, uh, you know, some live coverage in the future. Uh, looking, it was slated to be opened and operating by the sort of the back end of 2026. And uh, so still a couple of years away uh, before we see the uh, the first of the, uh, the commercial RPT services taking place. And look, to be honest, I dare say beforehand, there may be some route proving flights going in and out, um, you know, as they uh, do some training and, uh, you know, as they, uh, before they actually become a fully serviceable operating airport under ICAO regulations. Um, yeah, so I, I think watch this space. I, I, it's, it's, it's an exciting landscape for, um, for aviation uh, in this country and, and obviously more so Sydney because this is a brand new airport. It's a brand new airport, you know, like plane spotting has just gone twofold in Sydney. So yeah. you think plane spotting at Sydney Airport's going to be good? Well, you're going to have another airport to choose from. I think the other question is, is there going to be a curfew there or is it going to be 24 no, hours? No curfew. That is fantastic. Well, we can't have a cur curfew. We can can't we? have a curfew. You can have an, you can have an all-nighter, but you can't have a curfew. Can't have a curfew. But look... <laughs> I tell you what, I tell you what, it's going to come the day that Kurt's going to be out there doing a, uh, a show after dark at night time. I can just tell. It will be fantastic. Oh, jeez. Here we go. Here's, here's a great registration, if I don't say so myself. <laughs> uh, look at that. The uh, Alpha Mike Sierra, the, uh, the Air Ambo is just rolling through. That was the, uh, the medical traffic that was on the, uh, the final there. Uh, once they've cleared, I think they've just vacated there on Taxiway Bravo. They will make a right-hand turn at Golf and taxi to the Eastern Park to the to home ground. Air China now lining, lining up. up. Yep. yep. Now they've been cleared to line up. That aircraft has vacated, which is great news. So Air China next to. Uh... Oh, Nigel, just out of interest, lightsaber is still there. Oh yeah, I don't, it, it was meant to be coming down soon. Okay, okay. Soon. Redef keep an eye out. Re redefined soon. Mate, <laughs> I'll, let you know what, I'll, let, I'll let you know when I see it's down. Uh, Lynn, <laughs> Lynn W, all these streams are making it hard to be productive over this long weekend, but I'm loving it. Also, hi, Mum and Dad. I know you'll be on here too. I'll get on you, Lynn. Well, how good's that? We're, we're, we're glad that we've captivated your attention <laughs> over this uh, long weekend, which is just fantastic. Andrea D is here to celebrate I'll order more Little Wing shirts. Oh, good on you, Andrea. And uh, just making a point there that all purchases to our merchandise are going straight to Little Wings Children's Charity and uh, that's 100% of the, uh, the proceeds. So you, you're doing a good thing, Andrea, and uh, thank you for your support there, 12 months in the penthouse. I love it. And uh, Yudi uh, Murbury's here. Hello, Kern. I really enjoy the uh, surprise streams. If only Sydney was like Melbourne with no curfew. Yeah, well, we were just talking about that. <laughs> so, wow, small, small world. But, um, all right, is it uh, time for Air China? Where are they? They've Air China. Oh, slow start, slow start. Is a slow start. <laughs> I think he's making power now. Good on you, Nate. G'day, Curtin, to all the sit squad. Just about to head to the gym for a night workout. We'll have you guys on the headphones and on screen in front of me. Enjoy the night spotting and have a good one. Good on you, Mr. Schlotter. It's lovely to have your company. Say hello to Daryl for us. And uh, don't work too hard there in the gym. But um, enjoy your night hanging out with Sid Squad on the earbuds, mate, you legend. <laughs> and a quick cheeky one before Air China comes. Yvonne Shane is here. Happy Easter to the Sid Squad fam. I'll get on you, Yvonne. Feeling the love. And uh, thanks for the three tonight. Very, very uh, generous contribution. Thank you, my dear. Here we go. Air China, out the door. Will, we haven't uh, we haven't popped your engine glow cherry yet. No, I know. I was just looking for that actually. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, I was too, but uh, it hasn't hasn't arrived just yet. That's okay. We're uh, the suspense will, uh, will 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 keep us going. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> we have a uh, Cathay Pacific A350 just touching down over the just keys there, three four left. Yeah, so we'll see them roll through in just a moment. Yeah, big fan of the 350 myself. Oh, that is one beautiful aeroplane. Airbus really got it right with the with the 350.
Yeah, Boeing. Please take note. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the JD Life is here. Evening, Kurt, boys and sit squatters. I'm, uh, I'm back after three amazing weeks in, uh, in Bali and two excellent flights. Uh, oh, yeah, with, uh, with Garuda. Right, okay. Yes, the JD Life, because um, you convinced me to, uh, to uh, get myself on uh, Garuda later this year, heading off to, to Bali myself actually and um so you've, you've had two excellent flights there which is great sadly getting ready for the night shift and we'll return to normal life oh yeah well it's always the case isn't it after holidays the uh the withdrawals <laughs> um fenex now to come in triple seven freighter almost over the keys in from auckland i oh, good on you the jd life i'm really really glad to hear about your experience with uh with uh, garuda so um a full service carrier operating uh, between sydney uh, well australia and indonesia there and uh i uh, have obviously i've had a few options you've got qantas you've got batik you've got jetstar you've got virgin australia and you've got garuda all servicing um all servicing bali so um quite the uh, quite the options to choose from there I must say, um, Ruda over the years did have a very bad reputation and they unfortunately lost their uh, approval to fly over Europe and it was a wake-up call to the airline. And they got in uh, representatives from across Germany and other parts of Europe to just say, can you take over this airline and clean us up? And get us back on track. Get us back on track. And they have turned themselves around 100%. They are now sensational and a very safe airline. And they do have all their authorities back to fly over and in and out of Europe. Well, so you know what, Will? You've just story. given me even more confidence about flying on Garuda. So they thank you very much for that. I'm... Uh that's 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 good. Good intel to have, actually. Believe it or not, Garuda is a bit close to my heart as well because I was 13 years old, 1983, and I flew to Europe and back on a Garuda 747-200. Wow. 747-200. I know. Stop it, Will. Stop. It. I still got the old pictures at home. How, of it. how, how about seeing a 747-200 in a in a, uh, oh. a passenger, uh, you know, aircraft today, oh, these days? My word. Oh. Here we go, the, uh, the, the Fed Express, the, uh, the Tripler. Triple seven two hundred, looking yeah. good. Reverse is shutting nicely. Beautifully done there, FedEx 75 in from Auckland tonight. Message coming in from uh, John McCarthy. Happy Easter, Kurt. Hopefully you enjoyed your day, Easter Sunday morning here in Ireland. And uh, watching a Kurt feel a great way to start my Sunday. Oh, good on you, Johnny. Thank you, mate, for your support. And uh, have a lovely Easter Sunday. And uh, yes, if you just tuned in, I, I had a great Easter Sunday. I spent it in the air with Nigel. We were doing our, uh, we're doing some uh, joy flying uh, around the, um, well, around uh, Shell Harbour, uh, Albion Park area. We're doing some aerobatics just off the coast. Quite a scenic flight today. And um, yeah, made me uh, made me a little bit squirmish by the end of it, but uh, uh, we we had a great it was it was a great day uh, <laughs> all round is what I've got to say. And you, I, I I made it, Nigel. I made it. You didn't get sick by <laughs> any chance? No, no, I didn't get sick. <laughs> no, not at all. And we even we even had a lovely uh, schnitzel burger after the fact. Uh, Nigel made sure that I didn't eat before we went flying. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you know what? The video actually tells a pretty different story, Kurt. It, it says that you handled that all pretty well. Oh, I, know you, you said, I know you said you weren't feeling too great at the end of it. But uh, no, seriously, I, I reckon you did well. Oh, you good. did real well. Good, good. I'm impressed. <laughs> nice looking Qantas 737 800 series. Taxing guy. Yeah. Yeah. Them. Off to Adelaide tonight. Yeah, love it. Emma, she's back. Any chance of a curfew tomorrow? It's my birthday tomorrow. Ah, uh, Emma, happy birthday yeah, for tomorrow. Yeah, happy birthday, Emma. Yeah, look, Emma, I, um, it's a, uh, it's a, um, it's a, a, a TBC at the moment. Uh, I'm going to say it's going to. I'm going to say it's less likely that it's uh, going to be a Kurt View show. I think it's going to be either Tim or Matt uh, making an appearance tomorrow. Uh, so uh, stand by for that. Um, but look, if things change, then uh, you know you never know. You're luck in a big city. <laughs> Good on you, Emma. Either way, you'll see me again soon. Don't worry. Oh, Johnny Johnny Trains Vlogs was there. He's dropped the three, but it's just missed out. Oh, Oscar's gone ahead and gifted one Sid Squad membership. It's off my screen at the moment. Do you remember who you gifted it to? You didn't, you didn't see who it went to? You don't? No, it's in there. Well, look, I've got to say congrats and thank you, Oscar, as well, you cheeky devil. Wonderful. 889. 
Vacating the runway contact ground. Paul Airways, uh, 7, 8, yeah, 7, seven eight seven seven eight taxing yes. him. That's it. it Looking great from the, uh, nicely. In from Haneda. Oh, sorry, Nigel, you've got it, have you? You're right, mate. So, yeah, the, uh, the, the one gifted membership from Oscar went to Dashcam Fanatics. Oh, Dashcam Fanatics picked up Oscar's membership. Well, there you go. It certainly did. Well, um, I'm, board, how, how is that for you, Nigel? Only having to read one membership name out. <laughs> well, it's a lot better than 50, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, mate. Uh, like my G50 was impressive and I was happy to go through those because it was a, oh, a good geez. effort. Now look, one's, uh, one's more than plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Willis here, our friends are watching their first Sid Squad stream tonight with us. Well, hello to friends and family of Judy Willis. Or Wills, rather. Sorry, my apologies. Yes, yeah, good on you, Judy. And uh, hello to the uh, extended family. As you can see there, we've got lots of bird activity there in the uh, the vicinity as we just track one going over the airfield. Mm. Uh, Tim would love to have the cannon out at the moment, but... <laughs> Oh, get on your duty. Well, make sure that you get them to subscribe to uh, Sid Squad and uh, become part of the Fan Bam here. And they're celebrating five months supporting with us at the pointy end, Judy. You champion. And uh, Mel Mel's here up there in the Uluru Lodge for six months. Hello, Mel Mel. Welcome back to the show. Uh, thank you for your support. And driven by life, welcome to the Gold Coast Penthouse. How about it? James dropped the two, but the message was retracted. I missed it. And uh, Jetman Gaming's here. Hi, Kurt. I've had an amazing three months with Sid Squad. Thank you all. I oh, love it. Good on you, Jetman Gaming. Uh, Rail Life TV's here. Hi, Kurt. Great to see you back on the stream. Sorry I'm running late. Had a bit of an internet, internet problems tuning in from the home base in Yarra Valley, Victoria. Oh, that's okay, mate. You're with us now. And you know what? There's always the replay as well. But uh, get on your rail life. I know you were out there supporting Tim on the show yesterday as well. Now you're back again for uh, for the Kurt Few show tonight. I really do appreciate your support, mate. Well done. Uh, thank you for that. Did you see something there, Will, that sparked your, your attention there? I'm just looking at the 3.30 lineup. Um, it looks like uh, Shares One Airlines will, yep. looks like she'll be going soon. It's uh, all the GSE equipment is now clear. And you yeah. can see the engineer actually wandering around just doing some final closeout checks of the aircraft. So Yeah, I can see him with his little light on underneath. Is that, is that where you're looking? That's where I'm looking there. Yeah, he's just uh, yeah, beside yeah. the engine. And yeah. he's uh, looking under the wings, looking at... Uh, uh, the fuel panel, I think, is on that side from memory. Uh, checking the doors, as you can see with his torch, that's there shut. There's a fuel panel that he's walking up to that uh, probably closing that now, making sure everything's all secure and closed before uh, he gives the OK to, for the aeroplane to be pushed back. Yep, and then we'll just wait for the, uh, the beacon on it, and uh, all of a sudden it'll be out for play. Brilliant. Well, um, just on those A330s and the doors, mm -hmm. if, when they're doing their walk around, um, well, there's, I guess, indications in the cockpit to say when a door is open. It depends are there, which, are yeah. there times when there's a conflict between what the cockpit says and, and what the engineer is saying? Yeah, look, sometimes you can get errors. Um, you know, you, you've not got a, a closed message, you've got a, an open message, and but the door is shut. Uh, we can then MEL that indication once we've confirmed that the door is actually shut. Some okay. doors and service panels don't have indication, so like the fuel panel. Uh, from memory, I think that does, but uh, some hydraulic servicing panels and other minor panels don't have indications, so they need to be manually checked that they're okay. shut. Uh, they'll actually blow shut as well as the aeroplane departs, so it's not critical. But, yeah, certainly things like doors, uh, the passenger doors, can be very critical because if a passenger door is open or has an open signal, the aeroplane physically won't be able to take off. All the alarms in the cockpit will go crazy as you push the throttles forward. Yeah, OK. Hey, yeah. So, Thank you for that. Yeah, so if you have to MEL an indication on the door, you have to go quite through like a, a reprogramming process of the computer under the floor to tell the aeroplane, no, the, I know you can see the door's open, but it is actually shut, and yeah, you can go. So, yeah, it's um, quite a... The aeroplane being super computerised, it really looks after everything like you wouldn't believe. Okay. I think there's another thing. Yeah, look, another thing you also want to check for, the door might be shut, but sometimes there can be straps or debris hanging out of the door and that can create a lot of noise. You've, you've probably seen some incidents where um, passengers are hearing a big buzzing sound on the door and, um, yeah, people might leave a, a, a strap or an old milk carton or something stupid can be just left in the seal of the door. So, yeah, you're also looking to make sure it's clear and clean before you go. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you if you don't know if you don't know uh, what um, 
uh, the, the voice that you're hearing on the uh, on the on the channel tonight. Let me let me introduce our special guest here tonight, and uh, it is uh, none other than uh, my good mate Will, uh, who's up here from the nation's capital today. I am yep. doing a bit of plane spotting with Oscar, and they've come up this afternoon. But uh, first time on the show, Will. So thank you for being here. By no, the way, thank you, Curtis. I appreciate your company. It is a privilege and pleasure being now, here tonight. Now, now, why why we're we're hearing uh, so much uh, technical speak from you is you're a uh, retired uh, uh, engineer at Qantas. Is that right? That is correct. So, so there you go. So he knows more information than me, so thank God we got him on the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 20 years at Qantas and actually 10 years at ANSET, so once again oh, that's wow. sort of hides oh, my... you giving your age again, oh, no, mate. Come on, no. come on, man. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but we certainly missed the ANSET days and um, that was a great era. Yeah, and that's where yeah, it began wasn't it for a lot of us all. Oh, indeed. Yeah. And, uh, but no, 20 years at Qantas was absolutely fantastic. Uh, best years of my life. Thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, yeah, managed to do a lot of work on 747s, uh, did bulk of my career on 737s and A330s and also got to play around with uh, lots of other aircraft working on the international line, so uh, dealing with 777s and MD11s and yep. uh, A340, 5, 600s and everything. Um, I actually well, did the first. Well, you're not that much experienced. You're not that much more experienced than me, then. Uh, I think, Will. <laughs> Just a question for you on the MD11, if I can, Will. Yeah. The that uh, number two engine right up on the tail there. Yes. You can only see so much from the ground, and like when you see the the pilots and the engineers do their walk around, um, like pre-flight. Yep. They go up to the engines and they have a look around, and, and if there's no wind blowing, they'll just gently spin the fan around so they can have a look at all the blades and just see that everything's looking okay. With that number two engine. Um, uh, what's the go with inspection on that? Is there a, like a certain time that um, that has to be inspected by someone getting up on a scissor lift sort of apparatus or a uh, there is boom a, lift to be able to get up in there? Yeah, no, there is a hatch up through the fin or through the bottom of the tail, and you can get up into the intake duct of the MD-11 to get and a closer look. The, with, that's from within the fuselage you can go up, can you? Yeah, so up in the rear of the aeroplane, then you climb up the ladder and up you go, and you can get into the fan and do close inspections of the fan. But... One of the questions that people say is, how do you service the oil on the number two engine? Because uh, most jet engines need a can of oil after yes. most flights. And it's like, well, how do you get up there and service the oil? Well, they've got remote fills and you can literally open a panel on the ground, plug in an oil pump and pump the oil up and refill the oil tank on the MD-11 and the DC-10, which is effectively the same aeroplane. It's an extremely smart design and, and well set up. I'm fascinated with that, and thank you for that, because I've always looked at that number two engine and thought, you know what, that poor thing never gets the loving that number one and three get. We also used to call that the loud APU, because if the APU ever failed on the MD-11, they used to leave the number two engine running during a turnaround, believe it or not, because it was <laughs> up high and out of the way. So, um, yeah, look, an extremely versatile aeroplane and probably one of my favourites to uh, handle. Why did it uh, not succeed? Um, long term as a passenger aeroplane do you think? I think obviously uh, one of the things I think killed the MD-11 was it wasn't too many of them built. Uh, three engines is more expensive to maintain than two engines. Most airline executives around the world will, will literally say to you um, we only ever buy two engine aircraft because an engine's an engine they cost say five million dollars to overhaul uh, doesn't matter what it's on, whether it's on an A350, an A330 or an A380, well, all of a sudden that answers your question. People, you know, airlines generally just want two-engined aeroplanes because they've only got a $10 million overhaul bill instead of a $20 million overhaul bill is what you have on a four-engined aircraft or a you know, $15 million overhaul bill on something like an MD-11. So that's kind of what it boils down to. But at the end of the day, the aeroplanes did get old and their efficiencies weren't as competitive as, say, an A330 or an A350. And uh, they just phased out over the years for those reasons. And, um, did, the, did the tail engine, um, like having that tail engine configuration, did that add to the, um, like you're saying, five million per engine essentially for the overhaul side of things? Yep. But just the maintenance on the aircraft itself, did the tail engine, um, like, I guess having it up there, did that just add more um, unnecessary cost, I suppose, compared to a conventional? No, um, not really, to be there? brutally honest. I mean, it was all roughly the same. Access, getting an engine changed, you know, and it's all, like, okay, it was up higher, but they would, most airlines that had MD-11s were tooled to do that sort of stuff. They were tooled to change the number two engine efficiently. Um, it was much of a muchness, you know, it was thereabouts. So, yeah, look, not really to be honest, um, but yeah. One of the interesting things about, you know, three-engine aircraft was the TriStar. People wondered why the TriStar failed, and 
that well, we shouldn't necessarily stay say failed but it went out of service very quickly and one of the problems with the TriStar was spare parts it had quite a unusual engine it was an original Rolls-Royce RB211 series engine it was quite unique to that uh, to that aeroplane and the spare parts ran out so the aeroplane was actually reasonably efficient um, cost effective to fly but unfortunately getting the spare parts was proving to be impossible so most airlines got rid of the TriStar very quickly as we noticed about 10 20 years ago from what I understood from the TriStar apparently it was a fantastic aeroplane to fly on Absolutely, um, way ahead of its time. Uh, most yeah. of the pilots I've ever spoken to who flown the TriStar, that was the first thing they ever said. It was way ahead of its time. And I guess that was to its downfall, really. One would say <laughs> yes, but yeah. But no, spare parts was what really killed the TriStar. And, yeah, and right. I, I mean, that's some of the issues that a lot of airlines with older aircraft have nowadays. The aeroplane's quite capable, it's, it's reasonably efficient. More often than not, it's paid for, so it really is just making money. But getting the spare parts can be very, very challenging. So. That's why you see aeroplanes sort of, you know, fall off the, off the scene very quickly. Thanks for that. I appreciate the, uh, the insight with all that. And, and I've just been sort of scrolling through the, uh, the chat that we've got going as well. And there's quite a lot of people that are also appreciating the, uh, the talk on the, the tech stuff. So thanks, Will. Appreciate it. Uh, my pleasure. And look, and I love those old generation aircraft. And I mean, that's the sort of stuff I grew up with, you know, coming out to the airport, seeing DC-10s take off. And TriStars weren't a big thing in Australia. We very rarely saw them. I think Air Lanka was the only airline that brought them in here for about two or three years. Um, and it was quite a treat to see them. I've got some fantastic memories of watching the Continental DC, yeah, Continental Airlines DC 1010 series depart out of Melbourne direct to Honolulu and uh, it was uh, a Sunday and Wednesday night departure and we'd all gather out in the airport on a warm night and watch this thing fully laden with fuel because it was about a, at its limit of performance and uh, we used to call it curvature of the earth departure because if it wasn't for the curvature of the earth she would have been able to depart so and they were just magic days listening to this old old girls scream down the runway and you know and that's that's where the love of aviation starts for most people and it's just great memories and <clears throat> look aviation's changed a lot over the years i still love it i still love the community uh, the technology that's in <clears throat> airplanes is fantastic but you know in a lot of ways it's changed we don't have the noise we don't have the the particular tunes for you know every airplane had a its own personality its own tune to me maybe nowadays these, they all sound the same maybe these next gen aircraft it's they're just, sounding a little bit more quiet a little bit more mainstream they're, yeah they're quieter know. you know way too quiet. no more se no more 727s blasting out will <laughs> yeah it's just kind of <laughs> taking the fun away but you know at the same time the technology that's in these airplanes and the things they can do it's just amazing when you get into the guts of it and uh yeah, it's it's the industry has changed. Yeah, but you know what, right? Being alive in this in this era right now, you, you, you you're you're getting the best of both worlds, right? Yes, true. You know, in in maybe a hundred years' time, they, they've no idea what we used to have. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, apart I mean, from apart from the history, right? And look, give it. But I mean, another, you've experienced it. Give it over. another. <laughs> we're, we're seeing good young kids come here today, and you'll say to them, you know, I remember the seven two seven, and they just look at you in amazement. You know, <laughs> what's you, that? Seven two seven. You saw them. Yeah. And uh, all the Concord. Concord. Yeah. Exactly. And now, look, in another 20 years' time, someone will look at you and go, you saw the A380 departing yeah, here? Yeah, maybe, maybe. And it's going yeah. to be so quick. This is going to happen. And, uh, yeah, it's a fact of life, unfortunately. But And speaking of A380, we have the Emirates. Here we uh, do. The first of the th Emirates 380. You know what actually amazes me about when I look at this 380 now, Kurt? This is going to be doing a 14-hour flight. Indeed. To Dubai. She'll have about 205 to 210 thousand kilograms of fuel on board wow. which is around 250,000 litres and it will burn around 90% of that to do the journey. What are we talking it's about today on the Super Decathlon, uh, Nige? 100, 130 <laughs> litres? Uh, oh yeah, we, 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 I think we started off with about 125 or thereabouts and yeah. went down to about she 70. A, she, she, got a bit, she got a bit thirsty with the aerobatics but <laughs> that, that happens when you have them. What a, what a crazy comparison.
It is incredible. And, and when you go up and you sign for the fuel docket for a 380 or a 747 and you've just put 220,000 litres of fuel on board <laughs> and you go, my goodness, who's paying for this? You right, know? right, right, right. <laughs> and another funny thing is you walk up to the flight attendant on the aeroplane and say, look, we can't, we can't pay for it. Who's got a credit card? <laughs> <laughs> and and their jaw's drop. <laughs> <laughs> the, the horror on their face. It's unreal. Oh, Even with you. a 5,000 litre uh, fuel docket, you still can get that joke going good. So. Oh, here we go. We've got a message coming in from James. You guys do an awesome job. Chat is buzzing tonight. Oh, very kind message, James. Thanks, mate, for your support. Appreciate the uh, the two. Hey, Johnny's back again. Hi, Kurt. If you're live tomorrow, want to be on the mic? Well, you might have to chat with Tim because I'm pretty sure I won't be live. I'm sure if you give Tim a bit of a nudge on the shoulder, he'll, he'll uh, have you on the mic at some point there, Johnny. And uh, we got a message now coming in from Jack's Aviation. I didn't give you the uh, safety car, but I overheard you. Ah, oh, okay, right. Sorry, you were nearby. Ah, oh, I getcha. Okay, different guy, different guy. Apologies. Well, Tim will know. Tim will know those details anyway. But uh, but uh, thanks for that. Oh, I'll let you read, read this one. Oh, Listen. Craig Murray, tonight's show is going right off. Thank you, Craig. It is uh, good to see you still in the community, mate. And uh, really, really looking forward to seeing you. And yeah, thanks for the fifty dollars. That's absolutely sensational. <laughs> <laughs> a very generous contribution there from a good friend of the channel, uh, Craig, up there in Brisbane. And uh, oh, look, uh, uh, I, I had a sneaky suspicion I might see him today, but he, I don't think he's here. <laughs> yeah, Ty. Ty, triple seven, three hundred ER, or colloquially known as the W class. Yep. Yeah, the uh, the well, the uh, the workhorse of the industry, perhaps. That is. Uh, Boeing one off. really got that aeroplane right, I can assure you. And it's really amazing when you, when I used to handle 777s, you'd get aircraft that come in and have, you have a technical log and there'd always be something in a technical log. But when the 777 came in, nothing, nil, nothing wrong with wow. it. Wow. Every time. Clean sheet. Unbelievable aeroplane. I just, uh, and when you ever had to work on that aeroplane and do anything to it, it was so easy. It was so well thought out. It was, nothing was a problem. Boeing really, really got it right with that aeroplane. All right, here we go. We've got a bit of uh, prop, prop uh, uh, wing lights. Look at this. This is it. I'll oh, get those emojis there going in the chat for the <laughs> Dash 8s. This is spectacular. Look at that. And that is going to beat us home to Canberra tonight, I can assure you. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> now, talking about uh, doing live streams, uh, Kurt, I must talk you into doing a Canberra show one day. Yes, you must. You must. You brought it up earlier, and uh, I think uh, Oscar and Chris have probably uh, said something uh, very similar. Um, that, that's a more realistic uh, option, actually, uh, travelling down by vehicle with the, uh, all the equipment and the batteries and all that sort of uh, fanfare. So, yeah, I reckon we need to uh, work out a time. And uh, if you'll have us, I'm sure we'd love to come you'd down. Be there. Very, you'd be most welcome there and we'd love to have you and uh, support the show. It would that, be fantastic. That would actually be something new for the show uh, that we, uh, we, haven't, uh, we haven't featured Canberra on the show before. So that would be quite exciting, to be honest. They've got an open day coming up down at Canberra very soon. I think it's early next month. Is that right, Will? Uh, next weekend. Next weekend, there well, you yeah, go. Yeah. Um, you can yeah, uh, but... register to Eventbrite and get tickets. Uh -huh. And uh, it's free of charge. And I believe uh, P3 Orion will be there if you need yeah. to want to look over that. There's talk that uh, Haas is sending possibly the Connie a tracker. Uh, I think one of the DC3s. Uh, maybe a caribou. So um, yeah, you might see Connie over there. That would yeah. be uh, that'd be quite good. So there you go. That would be sensational. And as I said, Canberra look is a fantastic place to spot. We've got some of the best viewing around, but uh, unfortunately we just don't get the traffic. But when we do get traffic, it is fantastic. And we had a couple of uh, F18 Super Hornets there a few days ago, and uh, that was oh. fabulous to see. Uh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick question for you, if I can, please, Will. Yeah. Um, Sharon Jay just mentioned in the chat earlier, she said, uh, how often do all planes have their complete checks before use for safety? Now, that's a pretty open question. Yeah, There's certainly no. daily checks get done, but um, can you Okay, so that, every day, uh, Every airliner has, and each airline can call it a different thing. At Qantas, it was called a check two. That was done every two days. Um, other organisations call it a termination check or a term check for short. But, uh, you know, basically at the end of the day, an engineer will go over the aeroplane. Uh, we have a number of things that we need to look at and inspect and check. Obviously, the conditions of the wheels, the, the life of the brakes, uh, if there's any fluid leaking, uh, lots of general looks over. But that's pretty much done it every day. But uh, most airlines nowadays, certainly the domestic airlines, I'm talking 737s and A320 sort of aircraft, the pilot will do a walk around and he'll do a check. And if he finds anything wrong or he has any concerns, he will call us out and then we will deal with it from there. 
But if an aeroplane, certainly a twin-engined aircraft, is doing a, a, what we call an ETOPS flight or an uh, EROPS flight, where they're flying over water or away from a suitable aerodrome for a significant period, we have to do a check one or, or um, some baseline ETOPS check where we have to, once again, recertify the airworthiness of the aeroplane before we send it off on a, a long-range flight. And most of these international aircraft, because they're flying such a long distance, they'll actually have a number of engineers. So the 380 would probably have about four or five guys uh, doing a basic turnaround for the Emirates A380 because a lot of stuff goes wrong in the cabin. You know, people break tray tables and... Um, lights go out, a toilet, there's a number of them, they may not flush. There's lots of things that can go wrong with them. So they they definitely have, you know, four or five people turn a, a large international one around, maybe a triple seven, and we'll have one or two guys having to do the, the turnaround on that. But, uh, yeah, once again, it varies from what it is, where it's going and what it's doing. Who, um, in general aviation, we have a maintenance release that gets signed. Yep. Um, at the start of the day, I guess before the first flight. Yes. Who does the who does the maintenance release on a commercial aircraft uh, like say the Emirates A380 that's just taxiing uh, past? So is that ask. done by is that, is that done, done by, by a licensed a aircraft maintenance level? engineer? Yes, licensed so it has aircraft. To be done by the engineer. Yes. Okay. And we call it a CRS, a certificate return to service. So that revalidates the airworthiness of the aeroplane. So we go through all the paperwork. We go through all the aircraft. Uh, once we determine that uh, everything is in order, the aeroplane's in order and we're happy for it to go, the final thing we sign in the tech log is the CRS. And it is probably the most important signature that you do for releasing an aeroplane. And a pilot will pretty much will just be looking for the CRS and he knows everything north of that is uh, correct and done properly and accounted for and serviceable. Yep. No worries. Thank you for that. Now, on, in terms of the maintenance, um, mm -hmm. You guys have different checks that you do. In yes. GA, we have like a 100 hourly check. So every 100 hours, the aircraft goes off um, to a Lamy and it yes. gets um, gets the oil changed. It basically gets a, a great big inspection done to it. Comes back with a, a brand new fresh maintenance release and it goes for another 100 hours. Yep. Um, within the commercial uh, world, exactly obviously 100 so. hours, yep. but 100 hours would come up awfully fast for any of the aircraft that we see on, on stream tonight. That's so right. what's, the, what's the time frame for the different checks and what are the different checks that you do for the aircraft? So we have um, uh, weekly checks, which are actually yep. used to be done every week, but uh, most airlines now extend that out to fortnightly, but that represents about 100 hours. So okay. around a fortnight, they have some more detailed checks that get done, very similar to your 100 hourly. Then it is stepped up to up what we call A checks. And they go in and they can last for about two days. And then uh, about once every two years, we do what we call C checks on the aircraft. And they can be in for anywhere between uh, two weeks to four weeks. And then after about eight years, we have what we call D checks. And that's pretty much where the aeroplane gets completely stripped. A lot of modification work can also get done because it's a good opportunity. So it's not, we don't only look at, you know, changing the oil and changing the oil filters and all that, but there might be some modifications that need to be done. So they'll get slotted into the A check or the, or the D check or whatever, you know, it's going in for. And that's all managed by maintenance planning, which is quite a complex sort of uh, profession in itself. So for things like the C check and the D check, are they uh, based on calendar time, not, um, not hours flown? Cycles. Most of the like airline's cycles, okay. aircraft is done on cycles. So, okay. yeah, and it's quite interesting. You'll get an, an Emirates A380 that flies 14 hours most of the time or 12 to 14 hours most of the time, but it only does one cycle. Where a Qantas 737 will probably fly 14 hours within a day, but it does seven <laughs> or eight cycles. But that's what wears an aeroplane out. It's not the hours. When the aeroplane is flying, it has no wear at all on it. It is in its most comfortable scenario. But it's the cycles, it's the landing, it's the starting of the engines and the shutting down of the engines. And that's yep. what negates wear and that's what governs maintenance on an aeroplane. Yeah, nice, thank you for that. This is all, um, it's all pretty cool. Like, I mean, I've been working at, at SID for 25 years now. Um, but the nature of my job means I don't get the chance to just have a chat to an engineer like this. You know, I don't get to um, just have an in-depth conversation about you know the different maintenance schedules and stuff like that. So for me, it's I've been in the industry 
a long time, but it's it's fascinating for me. So I hope people out there are finding it fascinating as well. Um, there's so much to learn. There's so much to learn. I know. I'm uh, I'm I'm well out of my depth here, having uh, having our guest speaker Will on the show tonight. I uh, I, I think we uh, I think we've just found a new special guest that we might have to have on from time. It just means you're gonna have to come Absolutely. up to Sydney. Well, I'm gonna have to do a few more drives now. I can see. It. <laughs> And we've got uh, a Fiji 737 Max 8 here. Yeah, there's the engine glow. You can just, just see a little yeah, bit yeah. of, yeah, just a little bit as it rolls through there off uh, uh, the uh, the rapid onto um, Juliet. Uh, that's brilliant. I like what you talk about engine glow. I mean, for me, to me, it's a photography thing because the, the temperature of the air coming out of the core of that engine is around four or 500 degrees. It would actually be a lot less whilst it's taxing, but certainly on takeoff, around the mid part of the engine, the, the temperature of the air is about seven, 800 degrees. And by the time it gets to the nozzle, it would have lost about three or 400 degrees. So yeah, it's probably not the glowing metal that you're seeing, but it's probably more the, the radiation that the camera lens is picking up. And to me, that's more of a camera. Uh, you know what, Will? We love it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks sensational. I totally agree. And you know, it's working when you've got a glow out of there. Well, talking about glow, let's see if we've Here got we any go. on, the, uh, on the, uh, the Super A380 now coming across your screens right now. Here we go with the Emirates. Let's go. I mean, just you're speechless when you go when that thing goes. You just uh, you just got to hear it. It is magic. Emirates four seven eight contact departure. See you later. Contact departure zone four seven eight. Bye bye. And they settle in for the long trip back to Dubai. <laughs> And it's amazing to think this thing is now going to fly, you know, 12 to 14 hours to Dubai. It will go there, it will sit there, and in two hours' time, it will go somewhere else for another 12 or 14 hours, or if not, another six to somewhere in Europe. It will be on the ground for two hours, and then it will return. This thing is in the air more than it is on the ground. It's phenomenal, isn't it? But, I mean, for all the aeroplanes, um, old and new, mm. they've got to be kept moving to keep working. Um, <laughs> They only yeah, earn their money look, when they're working. Well, there's that, but if they sit on the ground and they, they sit in storage, or you know, if they're not doing anything, that's when the seals dry up, that's when little leaks start. Um, it, it's amazing how much the machine relies on just constantly being started, turned over, running, just to keep everything sort of moving. Um, well, one of the last things I did at Qantas was uh, for 10 months, I was down at Avalon Airport where the A330s and a number of 737s were parked and stored. And the idle maintenance program is quite intensive. We were very busy unwrapping the aeroplanes, running the systems, turning the wheels around. Um, it is quite an involved program. And it took a long time to, you know, to shake a lot of the problems out that settled in because they'd been stored for a number of months. And yep, a very real thing. Aeroplanes love flying. They love flying a long time. And uh, your more reliable aircraft are the ones that are doing the longer hours. It's oh, interesting you say about the uh, about the aircraft ready wheels turned. Yep. Um, throughout COVID, where the wheels, where the aircraft was sitting on pavement, after a while they started leaving little uh, indentations <laughs> on the uh, on the asphalt. <laughs> yeah, no, we and used to have something. To... We used to have to jack the wheels. Jack... You know? Yeah, we have to jack the wheels up, and we we would rotate them so the bearings would you know remain greased, and we'd make sure it would place back down in a different spots so that the rubber wouldn't. Uh, get like a memory flat spot and would make a, a horrific thump if it was to ever do a first flight. <laughs> Ta ta taxing like a 50 cent piece. Exactly. And a very real thing. So yeah, and it was a lot of work that had to get done to, to maintain the, the idle aircraft maintenance program. Hey, James is here now. Shout out to the stream. The chat is pumping. Oh, you're part of it, James. You're part of it here tonight. And I've got to say a special thanks to uh, to Nigel tuning in virtually on the show tonight. And uh, special guest Will, um, a uh, retired Qantas uh, aircraft engineer, is uh, here joining us in the person as well. And uh, so the show is pumping tonight. And it's so good to have all of your company. Let's get down there in the chat and catch up with a few things uh, before we get stuck back into the chat. Uh, Johnny Vogels here. Little Wings merchandise is awesome. Oh, good on you, Johnny. Uh, getting involved there with our Little Wings charity. And uh, just know that anything you do purchase on our merchandise is going uh, straight to our charity partner of choice, Little Wings. You're doing a good thing 
Is he a gimme's here? Kurt, how is the Sid Squad Ferrari going? <laughs> which which one? <laughs> which one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one that's on order? <laughs> oh, hello, Izzy. Welcome back to the show. It's a very generous contribution here tonight. I can tell you she's driving well. <laughs> Adam Maddie's here. Why is the Easter Buddy a good listener? He's all ears. <laughs> Happy Easter, guys. Well, Loving the well, stream geez. as always. <laughs> I'll pay that. Oh, get on you, Adam. Yeah, well, he, 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 is a, he is a dad, so he's allowed to pull those on. I get on you, Adam. Oh, look, speaking of the devil, uh, Nigel, uh, Shrubsy's here. He's saying, evening legends, about to pack my gear into the truck and head off to Gatton to start the week. Hope you enjoy the rest of the night. Shout out to Brenton at uh, Batch Motorsport. Okay, so it's his brother-in-law. So Batch Motorsport was on earlier and uh, gave a cheeky shout out to Shrubsy, who got him involved in the Sit Squad channel. And uh, now, we've got, now we've made the connection. So it's your brother-in-law. Well, good on you, Shrubsy. And, uh, mate, uh, have a safe drive uh, this week. And uh, no doubt we will hear from you again real, real soon. So thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. Steve Murray's here. No more chocolate. I'm bouncing off the walls. <laughs> I love catering. Oh, Steve is uh, Steve's a wonderful uh, uh, supporter of the show. He always uh, pops up from time to time here on Shep's Mound and surprises us with a donut or two. Uh, don't, uh, don't worry, Steve. I owe Dean on chocolate today. So. <laughs> <laughs> Get on you, Steve. Hopefully you're well. Oh, Johnny Logan, um, one of the uh, the OGs of the uh, supporters here at the uh, the Sid Squad family, he's gone ahead and gifted five Sid Squad members. Now, do you remember John and Annette from Queensland, Will? No. They, they might remember you, actually. I, I wonder. I wonder. Because they were around back about, you know, 20 years no, ago no, when we used to have our, our message board going strong and, and all the spotting weekends and things like that. I, I wonder. I'll put that to John. I haven't got the names there, um, um, uh, Johnny, but maybe Nigel's got five of those. I'm not too sure. The chat's been That's flying, so I think they've disappeared. <laughs> It's gone too fast for me, I'm afraid. Oh, yeah, that's sorry. okay. <laughs> we'll keep moving. We've got Emulate here dropping in $1. TG also here dropping in $1. And, um, Lovely little King Air ambulance. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was just about to say. Good on you, TG. Wow, ripping past at a rate of knots, I can tell you that much. Not shy of a, uh, a fast taxi here. Now, next heavy to depart from the southern end of the field here is China Recent 736 going home to Shanghai. It's the 359er, and uh, they'll be departing, or they'll be coming across real soon. We'll keep our eyes planted down there near the um, near the uh, the lightsaber so that we don't miss a beat. And, uh, oh, Kay Hale has gone ahead and gifted five Sid Squad memberships as well. Good on you, Kay. Thanks for your support. And, uh, yeah, big special shout-out to Johnny there and to Kay. They've gone ahead and gifted all those wonderful memberships. And a big... Um, uh, all those that have been gifted memberships will get notified via email. But uh, go and give your love there, Kay, the Johnny. Here we go. Trying to race them 350. Beautiful sight. We didn't get to see any brake dust on that one, but uh, something during the daytime stream, something to watch out for was, uh, so during gear up, you'll see the brake dust kick out of the main gear. I don't tend to see it too much on the 350s, Will. Um, you see plenty on the 330s, but yep. yeah, I, I don't normally notice too much of it on the 350s. I'm not sure whether it's just a different brake compound they're using on the on the 350s. I can't actually put my finger on it myself, but yeah, it, I would surmise strongly that it would just be a different brake compound, different, you know, brake setup that they're using on that aircraft. A message coming in now from Driven by Life. Uh, had you guys played on the TV last night during an Easter house party? It changed from an Easter party to a Sid Squad watch party. <laughs> I tell you what, that's that is, I'm, I like that. <laughs> that's the um, that's the community at work right there. <laughs> Good stuff, driven by life. I love to hear, I love to hear cool stories like. <laughs> well, hello to the rest of the fam that were participating in that wonderful house party. Great support, mate. Love it. Uh, well done. Message from uh, Kanga Mike. Welcome to the Bondi Beach, Kamana. Good on you, Kanga Mike. Welcome to the Sit Squad family. Uh, Robin Giles is here. G'day, Robin. Happy Easter from Plymouth in the UK. Loving Will's technical knowledge. I think we all are tonight. <laughs> Thank I you, think, Robin. Yeah, having Will on the show has certainly been, uh, he's been wonderful. So we're not going to let him go. We're not just yet. You can't get in the car just yet. All right, Oscar, we're not leaving just yet, OK? <laughs> oh, you're driving, though. So I'm mate, driving. You, you're going to have to make the call when you're ready. But uh, Oscar's got to rush out for the kangaroos on the way home. So, <laughs> so we've got Emma oh, uh, Qatar pushing back here. Yeah, the Super Q. Looks well, great. 
All right, going to be great to see that one go in a minute. Rail Life TV's back. Sorry, I forgot to mention, I've got a friend on the phone that he's listening in as well. Oh, wow. And great to have you on the channel, Will. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow, that's an interesting one. Just flick him the link, would you, and get them to watch. <laughs> Come on, you Rail Life. Welcome back. And uh, we, Will is giving you the thumbs up here and uh, behind the scenes for sure, indeed. And, uh, oh, Brendan Stockton, a solid eight for Nigel's takeoff today. Woo! Well, there you go, Nigel. Oh, yeah, did because you see it, yeah, he I did live stream it to the uh, to oh, the to the BTS oh, queue, so course. that's how they uh, yeah, okay. they saw it. You should have seen his landing. You should have seen his landing. It was at, oh, here we go. We're going to get engine glow here. Will keep an eye out for this. Are you ready? <laughs> yes, I am. I need to see this. <laughs> I can I can guarantee it. I can already see it. Here we go. It looks magic. You can just see that. Wait till uh, I wait till I turn. Yeah, you can see it just yeah. there. And so that's an outlet guide vane structure that 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 is glowing off. I can see it now. Well, hopefully they get the turn. Oh, I wish they no. were going Juliet. <laughs> I want them to go Juliet. Ah, oh, come on, guys. We have my favourite combination now rolling down three four left. She's one LA Airways A three thirty three hundred with the Rolls Royce Trent seven hundreds. Oh wow! Here she comes. Well, you know what? Oh, you know what? Well, yeah, you can see it there clearly there, <laughs> coming out of the core, <laughs> and you can see how the aeroplane flies. Now, did our Kiwi friends turn? I think they did. I think we've just missed them, did we? Ah, oh, damn! Yeah, she turned. Yeah, they, they're normally a, uh, a special for a, uh, a bit of engine glow there, but never mind. We had other priorities, didn't we? <laughs> oh, you can't miss the A330 200 with the rollers. Oh, Hawaiian oh, now coming. Hello another there. one. Well, hello there, Hawaiian. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Josh Amos is here up the pointy end. Uh, great to meet you, Kurt. I Hopefully you enjoy those days. Oh, there you go. Now I know. Josh, mate, thank you. That's the Josh. Well, well, thanks for bringing out the, the donuts. We've had a few pop our way. We're going to, uh, I tell you what, dessert is uh, certainly going to be on the menu. <laughs> mate, thank you. And uh, thanks for your support up there at the, uh, the pointy end as well, mate. Appreciate you coming out and saying hello. And uh, the donuts are well received. That's very, very kind. Uh, very kind as well. Phil Wise is here dropping in a two. Thank you, Phil. Uh, oh, and now, now there's a message as well attached. Uh, don't forget to... Uh, uh, wine <laughs> rubber band before takeoff, <laughs> like a slingshot. <laughs> oh, well done, thank you, Will. I feel rather, uh, <laughs> and Will. That's why we're on the well, topic. Spending, spending many years winding rubber band. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Craig is there. Hello, Craig. Dropping in a two. Good on you, mate. Thank you for that. Hopefully you're doing well. Gareth is here. Happy excellent Easter. Cheers for the stream. Well done, Gareth. Uh, that's a clever one. I like that. I like that. That's very clever indeed. Uh, going back to our uh, Super QGs. They're far off there in the distance. Uh, I'll just show you now. Um, so, Miles Harrison's away there in the dark. <laughs> so the tug is now disconnected. The aeroplane's pretty much been handed over. And uh, she'll be just doing her final flight control checks right now. And then will be asking for a taxi clearance. Right indeed. And uh, we've... Will. Oops, sorry. There we go. Flight sorry, control check. Checking the rudder. So because this is a fly-by-wire aircraft and uh, each pilot will has to do a check of each flight control system. So he'll have to check the aileron, the elevator, the rudder, and then the captain will have to then do it again. He'll have to check he has correct sense and movement of the elevator, aileron and rudder. So that's what they're going through at the moment with that aircraft. And after that's done, here we can see the flaps now deploying out. We'll make sure that uh, we get no maintenance messages and they'll be pretty much now asking for taxi clearance. He's got his taxi lights lighted up and she'll be going now. Yeah, slightly off topic, we'll, um, hmm? question from Tim in, uh, <laughs> in private chat. Yeah. He just, uh, he asked if I can ask you if you're a Raiders supporter coming from Canberra. <laughs> now, <laughs> hang on, oh, hang on, be careful. Yeah, be careful here. Yeah. <laughs> on the green machine. Now, oh, oh, Dougie, Dougie's in the chat. Oh, it it is funny you mention that. 
because I'm right. actually from originally I'm from Melbourne. I moved to Canberra two years ago, so I've had to oh. learn all this rugby stuff. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but, I have, but I have joined the Raiders Club because they got really good chicken schnitzels there. So. Oh well, Tim <laughs> says tell, tell him I said up up Cronulla. <laughs> <laughs> But, Long with Newcastle Knights. <laughs> but yeah, I need to uh, learn how you play this game. It's a little bit foreign uh, to me, you know. So. <laughs> oh, Tim. Uh, Next time, Tim, you can jump in chat and upset yourself. That's <laughs> much. Yeah, yeah. But did you hear? Uh, we've got. We've also got Dougie on the show as well, tuning in virtually. How are you, Dougie? Hey, hey. Hey, How hey. A uh, lovely to have your company. And you were you were reminding me about Raf's 103rd birthday. Was that yesterday? Was it? Uh, today, oh, I today. Oh, today. Today. Yes. Okay, there you go. There you go. So, Happy birthday, Royal Australian Air Force. Uh, yeah, thanks for that, Dougie. And uh, we've got a... Um, we did have a message on screen as well. I'm going to get back to it. Daniel Dornack is here. Welcome to the Bondi Beach Cabana. Good on you, Daniel. Uh, thank you for that. Emma, hey, she's back again. If you do do a Canberra stream, we might be able to meet you. Yeah, because you're not far away. Well, uh, look, if, if we do do a Canberra stream, that is one stream that you will get notifications about because we'll, it'll be planned. Uh, you'll, you'll have plenty of notice before we do that. So, uh, yes, absolutely keep it in mind, for sure indeed. Rail Life has gone ahead and gifted one Seed Squad membership there. Uh, thank you, Rail Life, for being supporting us uh, uh, lo uh, wonderfully tonight, and it's very kind, very kind. Jonathan's back again. Hey, Kurt, can I be on the mic on the next stream? Well, if you're out here tomorrow, there's a high chance because I think, uh, well, I'm kind of hoping that Tim might be out. If it's Matt, well, uh, well, you'll have to wait for the next one. But um, for sure, we'll, um, we'll, we can arrange that, Jonathan. No worries, mate. Tim's here. Stig Aviation has some good tech maintenance content on YouTube. Ah, uh -huh. there you go. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. But, but there you go. There's a, there's a channel to follow. So Tim's uh, hooking us up there with those details. Good on you, mate. Thanks for the fibre there. Well done. And uh, oh, Danielle Sekutova dropping in the crate. Oh, no, this time she's just celebrating memberships there for 14 months. You know, Nigel, Danielle, she's always dropping in the cronus, so I just get automatic autopilot when I see her beautiful name show up yeah. on the show. Absolutely. Ahoy there to Daniela. Yes, uh, indeed. And, and all the, Czech, uh, the people in the Czech Republic who are tuning in this morning, I guess, would be... Uh, in the Czech Republic. Uh, wonderful. Yes, we'll go. Yeah, so from Simon, how, how are cycles measured on a carbon composite aircraft like the 787 and the A350 compared to an alloy aircraft or an aluminium aircraft? Look, it's exactly the same. Cycles are cycles. It's, uh, you know, all about the aeroplane being pumped up when it's at high altitude, having stress on the structure. But uh, the carbon fibre uh, aircraft can actually... Uh, hold a lot more pressure so it's it has a higher cycle uh sort of well, i'm trying to find the right word you can do higher cycles before the required checks ah hawaiian airlines a330 Well, there you go, Will. You've, you, you've seen a little bit of engine glow now. That it's is the, sensational. Uh, yeah, that looks fantastic. Yeah, uh, look, we uh, we prepared that one earlier. It's def uh, definitely a sit squad special. And the classic A330 slash A340 wine glasses coming off the uh, yeah, winglets. Yeah. They, they look, look, sens <laughs> yeah, look sensational. So, yeah, so just getting back to that, yeah, the carbon fibre aircraft is far more forgiving and, and far less maintenance is required. Uh, the, the cycles is much higher compared to an alloy aircraft. But uh, the downside is, is when there is damage done to um, a carbon fibre aircraft, the repairs are far more complex and costly. So in engineering, in life, in everything, in flying, you can't have something for nothing. So that's quite often the trade-off with that. Good on you, Simon. Great question, mate. Thanks for, uh, for dropping that in. And uh, if you do have any other uh, technical-related questions you want to flick over to Will, we'll, uh, drop them in the chat and we'll try and pick them up as we go through. And uh, Daniela is back again. She is dropping in the Kronos. Good on you, Daniela. Thank you for that. And uh, Reese Gallagher, and hopefully to hear from Will again in the future. Well, oh, thanks, well, that, well that'll be up to Will. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't, I, I, Will this was is sensational. I'll definitely look, be back. Since reconnecting with Will, he did reach out and uh, he, he, he asked me a couple of times when the next live show would be on. He, he 
wanted to come and see the uh, the setup and, and say hello, and, and uh, we, we we hadn't we hadn't got there yet. But tonight I can finally say I'm glad that we we made our we made ends meet, and uh, I'm I'm more than uh, more than glad and super happy to have uh, Will featuring on our on our little Sid Squad show here down under, and um, how lucky we are to um, to have a, 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 a person of his of his knowledge and experience to to be able to um, get us through tonight all the way through to well whenever he's leaving. But um, it's, it's, it's been great. I'm, I'm really, really enjoying your it company, is mate. It's just so. sensational being here. And to me, this is what spotting's all about. Just meeting people, talking about airplanes and sharing knowledge and sharing experiences and just being a part of the community. It is absolutely fantastic. Oh, well done, well done. And uh, we've got a... Uh um, well, do, 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 do. oh, RKO, here we go. Uh, yeah, supporter up there for eight months in the Bondi Beach Cabana. Good on you, RKO. Thank you, mate. And uh, Aussie Link uh, Slots is here. Happy Easter, guys, from Aussie Link. Sydney Plane Spotter and, and Pokies Player. <laughs> Enjoy your live stream tonight. Congrats on your channel. We'll spread the word so, uh, to so many others on YouTube, uh, other YouTubers. Oh, good on you, Aussie Link Slot, mate. Thank you very much for that. We have Retro Ru XP coming through. Yes. Uh, one of the old favourites. And lit up nicely with the Boeing Sky interior, LED lighting. How good is it? It is beautiful. And if you're just tuning in, I did tell the story uh, earlier today, and if you've just tuned in in the last hour or so, um, I always love that story about when this aircraft arrived from the Boeing factory, brand new, with that 1970s colour scheme on it. It pulled up to the Sydney terminal and uh, some passengers looked at it and asked if they could be changed to a later flight because they didn't want to fly in the old aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it was brand new. So, But yeah, it's a classic industry story, that one. Yeah, they pulled that one at the gate. <laughs> <laughs> Message coming in now from Andy Egan. Great stream as always, team. I was out playing spotting at Melbourne today and met two fellow Sid Squad enjoyers. Ah, hello if you're watching. Well, there you go, Andy. Thanks, mate. Well, that's good to know. And uh, uh, it's exactly what Will just said. You've got the, you know, people down there chatting and then all of a sudden you're talking about Sid Squad. And uh, then, you know, small world, you connect the dots and we're all talking about each other. How about that? Did you want to... Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, so here we go. Just want to see where we're at with those ones. There we go. That's so better. I don't memorise a timetable, but I do look at the aeroplanes and go, yeah, that's probably a little way away. But uh, looks like Malaysian still got the JCPL cargo loading on it, so that's going to be a good half an hour to an hour away before she goes. And Qantas, he's one of the later ones to go. Yes. Yeah, and Qantas will probably be sitting there for a little longer. It's if you look under the, you'll see these tubes coming out of the belly of the aeroplane just behind the engine, and that is ground air conditioning. Oh yeah, ground, uh, ground. Uh, what is it? There what do they call it? Uh, um. So there's two types of air that we put in. Which is a light, that's a low pressure air, which goes straight into the air conditioning mixer, and that gets pumped through to the vents of the cabin to supply cool air, so we don't have to run the APU or the, the aircraft air conditioning systems. The other one you'll put in is a high pressure one. So if the APU, the little jet engine in the back, has failed, we can use that high pressure air to start the engines. Once we get one engine starting, you can use the air from that running engine to start the other engine, which is known as a cross bleed start. But uh, yeah, that looks like it's sitting there for a little while. So. Another thing people want to notice with the A330, uh, I noticed the temperature here is 23 degrees. But if you're ever at the airport and you'll notice an A330 or an A340 parked at the gate with the flaps set at one, people try to work out why is that? Well, when the airfield is around 30 or 32 degrees Celsius, when the air conditioning is running with high pressure air, unfortunately one of the design faults of the 330 is you can get a duct overheat message uh, in the cockpit. So what you do to alleviate that is when on a hot day you park the aircraft at the gate, you leave the flaps out set at one and allows enough cooling air to get in under the leading edge slats there and uh, alleviates that message popping up. Keep the flaps out. Unwarrant, un unneedingly, so it causes a lot of dramas and I'm trying to clear that message when it pops up. So yeah, so on a hot day, if you ever see a 330 parked at the gate with the flaps out, you know it's a hot day. There's going to be another hot day I think here tomorrow. 
What are your forecasts for tomorrow? Uh, let me just do a double check for you. Uh, what are we? East uh, Monday, 28 degrees. Sunny. Brilliant. That's not hot for Sydney. Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> I love it. That's love beautiful. It. Well, we got, well, we had the uh, the subleys rip through the other day and it cleared out all the humidity that we had. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now, now it's back. <laughs> you know, we've got four days of great weather and plenty of humidity going around. So, But we're loving it. We're loving it. Another four to six weeks, we're looking forward to our minuses at night in Canberra. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, you, yeah, you will. Yeah. You will indeed. There we go. Johnny Vogel's back. Uh, will your awesome ex answer oh, myself, 15 years Melbourne? That's beautiful. On you, John, that uh, ex answer days and answer days were absolutely fantastic. And yeah, thanks for letting us know. That's yeah, it's good to reminisce indeed. Uh, Benny is, uh, Ben Mal uh, Malley's here. To Will, I remember when George Gregan uh, used to work the ticket counter at Answer at Canberra Airport. Uh, yeah. Now, you've not been to Canberra for. for, for, for a long time, but... No, I've only been a Canberra resident for about two years, so, yeah, Ansett was gone. Well, uh, with the preconditioned air that they've got hooked up to the Qantas A330 there, yep. um, how effective is that compared to... Um, the aircraft using its own air conditioning packs. Does it still do a pretty good job for you guys? No, nah, it struggles. Uh, certainly really? the equipment we've got here in Australia, uh, it, it really oh struggles God. to keep the aeroplane cool, especially on a hot day. But if you go to somewhere like uh, the Middle East, they've got some really efficient high-powered units and yeah, they really, really cater for it over there. But uh, personally, you'd only use it when it was overnighting. If you were going to be boarding passengers, there's no way in the world I would have used it because the aeroplane would have been too hot for the passengers to board. So an hour before we boarded, we used to turn the APU on and run the, what we call the air conditioning systems, they're called packs. And we'd run Ship. both packs. And the 747 on a really hot day, that that used to struggle to, to cool down. It was, um, that was sort of, we used to have to leave that running for three or four hours just to cool it down, otherwise it would get too hot. And if it was sort of like 40 plus degrees outside, uh, there was days where we, the APU just wouldn't supply enough high pressure air to keep the aeroplane cool. So we had to start two engines to supply enough airflow to cool the aeroplane down. And we did that on occasion to, to cool it down because you couldn't have passengers boarding an aeroplane if it was 30 or 35 degrees uh, inside the cabin because they only make it hotter with their own body heat. So yeah, quite a challenge. Okay, thank you. Um, Will, going back to Ben's uh, uh, statement there about uh, George Gregan operating the ticket counter in Ansett. Don't yeah. recall? No, I don't recall. And, yeah, look, unfortunately, I've only been in Canberra. Well, I've been there for two years now. I absolutely love the place. Uh, I think I'll be spending the rest of my life there. It is um, Australia's best-kept secret, I always say. <laughs> but, um, no, yeah, I've, got a, look, I've got a cousin down there, too, and uh, he seems to rave about it. I don't know what all the fuss is about. I've got to get down there again. <laughs> it's great. No traffic, no hassle. Yeah, yeah. Lots of great cafes, restaurants, lovely lifestyle. Uh, good on you. My old man used to live there, and I've got to admit, I've heard it called many other things over the years, Will. But, uh... <laughs> Ring a ding ding! Yes. But as I frustratingly always say, we've got the best spotting in the world, literally, with no aeroplanes. So. Oh, jeez. <laughs> here we go, we've got Stephen Tomasi here at Coldy in my hand, tuned into the Seed Squad live stream. What a way to end my evening shift on an Easter Sunday from the, uh, the nation's capital. Cheers, Curtin, Seed Squad fam. Great work. I'll oh, get on you, Stephen. Another local down there. Fantastic, mate. Dropping in the big ones. Zero. Very kind, very kind, Steve. Now, hopefully you're enjoying the show tonight. Uh, lovely to have you back. Lovely to have you back. Mark Sullivan here. Happy Easter, guys. Loving the glow. Good on you, Mark. <laughs> we'll try to bring a little bit more to you as the night goes on. Michael here up there in the Bondi Beach Cabana. Good on you, Michael. Thanks for joining the club. And uh, Ms. Uh, Veratias, uh, happy Easter, Melbourne AU, stuffing my face with chocolate till I'm sick. Yeah, been there, done that. <laughs> well, well, that's the way to do it, isn't it? Well, the other way you could do it is uh, go on uh, Nigel's aerobatics uh, flights and, uh, you know, uh, round three, and I, I, I don't know how it would have fared. <laughs> you, you would have been fine. Oh, I know, you did fine. No, oh, hello, um, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, very uh, Tattis. Lovely to have your company and enjoy your chocolate tonight. Enjoy your chocolate. I'm sure I'll have some a little bit later myself. Keith Thompson's here in the Bondi Beach. Come on, I got on you, Keith. Thank you, mate. Shout out now coming in from uh, Ian Hodges. Uh, what do we got here? Qantas 556. Yeah, the X-ray Zulu Papa in the retro livery. We saw that one go. We're slowly catching up. Uh, well done, well done. Thank you, mate. Thank you for the generous contribution. Also, Corey Barnett. Happy Easter, Kurt. And that's it, Squad fam. I've heard a rumour that uh, Qantas's first 738 Victor X-ray Alpha only has 12 months left. 
my mission is to go for a flight on her before she retires. Yeah, VXA was the first one in the Qantas fleet. It was uh, December 2001, I recall, it arrived. It was the first of four which was originally built for American Airlines. So it had a lot of American Airlines fit out on it when Qantas got it for the first few months. And uh, yeah, she's 22, 23 years old now, so she certainly earned her money and she deserves to uh, move on to greener pastures, as yes. we would say. Got so, uh, on how many cycles she'd have? I don't know off the top of my head. I haven't been with Qantas for a couple of years. Uh, I used to look in the maintenance schedule and have all that sort of stuff in the back of my head. Couldn't even begin to guess, but uh, it is a lot. It has definitely, <laughs> definitely earned her uh, keep over the years. She has so, uh, been there. She has done that. Correct. Great, <laughs> great, uh, great one there, Corey. Thanks for that, and uh, and to, East, uh, to Ian Hodges as well beforehand. Thank you guys for your wonderful support. Appreciate that. And uh, Grant W is here, and he's saying, uh, I better get to Canberra before winter arrives. Oh, it's the best <laughs> time winter there. The sun shines, and it's just bliss. But it yeah. is cold. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Grant. Make it happen, is what he's saying. And Amelia Briscoe, thanks for the most engaging stream tonight. This weekend is Arnie's uh, flavour at Christian Festival. <laughs> As he says, you have to love Easter, baby. <laughs> FedEx 777 uh, freighter, 200 freighter under tow. Yeah, thank you, Amelia, and uh, it's lovely to have your company on the show tonight. And uh, really nice to hear that uh, that feedback there. And I'm glad you're enjoying the engagement uh, with us tonight. And uh, lovely to have you here. And uh, Jared Quinn, thank you, Kurt and the team, for all the streams. Oh, it's our pleasure, Jared. It's our pleasure, mate. Thanks for supporting us and being here as part of the show and watching along. It's nice to have your company. And the Aussie Link slots is back again. Happy Easter, guys. Again, guys from uh, Aussie Links. Well, happy Easter to you and your respective family and friends as well. Good on you, mate. Uh, wonderful support of the show tonight. Uh, you've been here a couple of times. And Andrew's here as well. Welcome to the Bondi Beach Cabana. Well done, Andrew. Message coming in there from Charlie. Dropping in $1. Get on you, Charlie. Thank you for that. Oh, Batch Motorsport is back. Stumps, uh, stump mics are working beautifully. Sorry to the neighbours trying to sleep. <laughs> well, uh, well, uh, well, we'll just we'll just turn it up then, shall we? Well, we're going to have to turn it up for the SQ A380 about to depart Singapore 242, going back to Singapore because they're not as loud as some of the uh, some of the old uh, traditional, more traditional aircraft. Not the next gen there. <laughs> not not. No, and uh, Singapore Airlines, uh, yeah. Long-term airline in this country. Good old nickname I love for Singapore is the Custard Duck. The Custard, <laughs> custard duck. duck. Where does that come from? Well, if you look at the tail, it looks like a little... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The custard duck. The custard duck. Yeah, okay. I like it. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we had quite a lot of nicknames for the airlines down in Melbourne. It was a bit of a, 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 an, a funny local language. So, yeah, we used to call Shazwan <laughs> Airlines spicy chicken. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> Thai was called chicken Maryland for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> wow. Well, Singapore getting, was custard duck. Well, we're getting it all. We'll, 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 we've got mango We got mango pancakes for Scoot because <laughs> they, they look like mango pancakes. So, <laughs> well, I like yeah, we've all got these the food uh, uh, the food similarities for our for our aircraft. Here we got uh, the Emirates now pushing back off uh, Bay 57. So exciting to see another super coming out our way, which is great news. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more action to come on the Sid Squad show as we uh, make our way almost into the final hour of the show. Uh, Heather B is. Um, I'm about to say, Kurt, if you don't mind, this Emirates is pushing back. Can I dedicate that to someone? You may indeed, uh, indeed. Uh, hit me up. I'll dedicate it to one of Sid Squad's newest uh, viewers, and it's actually uh, Rosemary, Rosemary Shrubsy, oh, Shrubsy's wow. mum. Shrubsy's really? mum sitting down there. Is She's really? watching Sid Squad with Shrubsy. So, uh, <laughs> Rosemary, this one's for you. Wow! <laughs> Enjoy wow. this one. Well, wow, Shrubsy's working hard for Sid Squad in the background yeah, there, isn't he? He's recruiting everybody. He's, he's well. recruiting he's everybody. Well. Good on you, Shrubsy. And hello to Rosemary. A big shout out to Rosemary. And uh, going back to Heather B, because she is actually on screen at the moment. The Big Q and the Retro Wowzer. Loving them both. Well, well we, we got, we've sent the Big Q out the door, and then we're going to have the, the Big Emirates Super. So that'll be the next one. And uh, we actually sent two Retros on tonight. So that's great. Heather, thank you for your, uh, your generous contribution to the show tonight. It's lovely to have your company here well done uh sign winder is here just discovered you blokes the other day my grandfather in law worked for Qantas in Longreach, and it was fascinating listening to his stories it would be absolutely fascinating that is absolute gold yeah Longreach, special place 
uh, especially there for Qantas. Actually, the privilege of going out to Clon Cloncurry not long ago. Oh, Cloncurry, yes. Yeah, yeah, which was one of Qantas's original destinations, and they have a Qantas hangar there. Oh, really? Yeah, and it was just like seeing history. It was fantastic. Oh, well, yeah, and this, this, this is a long reach as well, all about history. Exactly. I tell you. I have an interesting question here from Graham. Uh, hey, well, what will happen to the Qantas 737s when they retire? Well, um, look, anything can happen. The, they'll either get sold off to uh, another airline who will use them in, you know, Africa or look, in Canada. It's quite an option for them. But a lot of people think they'll get turned into freighters. And what a lot of people don't realise is that the 737-800 is probably not the best freighter compared to the 737-700 because um, to convert that, you have to do a lot of work on the floor of the 800 being a longer aircraft. But the 737-700 actually makes a much better freighter and they're actually highly valued and purchased as secondary aeroplanes to be converted into freighters. So you'll see a lot more of them. But uh, not saying they won't be converted into freighters. Someone may look at it and go, yep, there's a lot of life and cycles left in this thing and we will invest the money in strengthening the floor, putting the cargo door in. So yeah. you may see some of them go off as freighters, but uh, mm. more than likely too, they'll end up going off to the desert and getting scrapped out for parts because they're quite old. Um, they have done a lot of cycles. And um, it's it, if I'm a betting man, I, I would suggest that's where the, most of the Qantas 7.3s will end up. There's uh, one of the latest... Um, they're not. It's Team Air, I think. Team Global. I think mm -hmm. they're calling themselves now. Formerly Toll. Uh, one of their freighters. Um, one of their newest ones. Oh, yeah, Team Global series. Express. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Global Express. It's uh, it's an ex-Virgin aircraft. Okay. Um, so it, it, it's at, an 800. 800. Yeah. So obviously yeah. They, they've, they've seen a lot of life in that aeroplane. So they actually have to invest a lot more money into converting it as a freighter. So. And look, the this, this 737, 300 and 400, was, they're exactly the same aeroplanes as the, structurally as the 7 and 800. So, yeah, it's, we carried that experience over from those aeroplanes to that newer generation aeroplane. So, yeah, they just have to determine whether the aeroplane's got the life and if they want to invest the money in strengthening the floor as well as putting in the cargo door. Yep. Steve Amos there on screen, and uh, we're just going to let this 7-3 go through because it's super loud. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Stephen is saying, wow, 13 months and it's a perfect group, loving the planes, keep up the great work. I need a long haul Friday, I love Hawaiian Airlines. <laughs> oh, I could definitely join you for that one, Steve. Yeah, well, uh, the, uh, the long haul Fridays, well, we're going to, yeah, as you know, mate, Tim and I, we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to work, work our way towards another long haul uh, Friday really, really soon. Now, this, I think, is the, uh, the Four Seasons. Is this the uh, the Four Seasons jets just still, uh, yep. sitting off there at the uh, the Kilo Aprons, I believe? A three twenty one Neo looks absolutely sensational. I saw the photographs this morning. Did it arrive this morning, or was it yesterday when it arrived? I think it was yesterday. yesterday. I think it was. Yes. Yeah, uh, it looks fantastic. And then uh, I was told it's a part of a world charter. So um, once again, if I'm a betting man, that would be all configured in business class seating throughout the whole aircraft. Wow, which is quite common for let's, sort of let's those. Let's get a sort of Guernsey like, on board that. Oh, wouldn't it be magic? I tell you, <laughs> only for those with deeper pockets than mine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that would be a very expensive, uh, yeah. And now, Damien Markovsky's here. Uh, can an aircraft be airworthy if the APU is not working? Flew on an A330 from Haneda to Sydney and pretty sure they had to start the engines from a start cut. And that answer is yes. And it is MEL 49-1 that we apply and the APU is not to be used in on the ground or in the air. And yes, you have to do a ground start and subsequent cross bleed start uh, before departure. So going back to the first question, yep. however, so can an, can an aircraft be... Uh, so it is airworthy. It is airworthy, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, you yeah. apply the MEL, and then once the MEL is applied, uh, yes, the aeroplane is airworthy, and we will then supply a new CRS and declare it airworthy. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. And you and may have fix some, the APU. And the, yeah, <laughs> but you may have some <laughs> operational restrictions. Uh, you may not be allowed to fly ETOPS, for example. So if you are... Hawaiian Airlines, for example, you may need to fly a longer route to overfly certain or closer to certain airports. Oh, look at that. China look at Airlines. This. Nifty 50. Look at this. The old China <laughs> Airlines. Look at their special livery. Hello. Oh, doesn't that look great? It does look great with the uh, the apron lighting there because of all the uh, the works that they've got going on on the 30s bays. All the, 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 the lights on the apron there are lighting it up quite nicely, which is, which is um, great. We can, See the engineer walking away, waving the flag to the pilot? 
Lovely. Uh, Markle Sparkles there, up there in the Bondi Beach Cabana for two months. Hello, Markle. Welcome back. Brendo, this guy, for the uh, SQ222, they used an A350 instead of the A380. Yes, they did. Um, that was earlier today, I believe. Um, and uh, we're going to see an A350 uh, coming up from Singapore Airlines in just a moment. Singapore 2... Singapore 242, runway 34 left, clip for immediate takeoff. There we go. Yep. Singapore 242 now cleared for immediate takeoff. Three, four left. Gosh, I should be a commentator. <laughs> <laughs> Fluky. Oh, I love the iPhone Pro Maxi Bond Pro Ultima engine glows. <laughs> oh, on your Fluky. Oh, ding, ding. Uh, that's brilliant, mate. Yes, we've got the iPhone out here tonight under these beautiful light conditions and uh, doing a wonderful job bringing in all the uh, wonderful coverage. Speaking of... Uh, wow, there we go. I've got a bit of a fireworks oh. display there in the background. Just for you, Will. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> and now they're finished. <laughs> <laughs> it was only one. Yeah, it looks like, looks like it. Uh, oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, only one was in the budget, was it? <laughs> All right, we're keeping an eye out now for uh, uh, Singapore super. Airlines coming our way. Get on your fluky, mate. Thanks for tuning into the show, mate. Here's the custard duck. Here we go. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't, I, I don't think I can unsee it. Dougie, Dougie taking great pleasure in that one as well. <laughs> Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, and a, a, and a left turn to boot. Happy days. That is poetry in motion. That is the only words you have for that sort of thing. Okay, we've got China Eastern now on the apron coming out to play. We've got the Emirates uh, Super going out to Dubai also as well. China Airlines there in the background, Dynasty 52. Qantas 25 to Haneda is the A330 also there on the northern apron coming out. So uh, I tell you what, I, I dare say we're uh, definitely in our hour of power. And uh, as we wind down, 53 minutes uh, to go on the show uh, or up until at least the last R R R R RPT service tonight. And, uh, oh, look out. What is going on here? Steve, you cheeky oh, devil. Oh, my goodness. That Steve, is. Steve, <laughs> put it towards up updates and a large box of tiny teddies. <laughs> you, know, you, know, box I know, box. you know what, Steve? I've, I've got a box of tiny teddies uh, uh, somewhere in one of my packs here tonight. <laughs> Great streamers. And we've got donuts over there. We've, we've got plenty to go through if we really, if we really want to do. Great streamers always and so much interesting knowledge, open catering. Thank uh, you, Steve. Well, yeah. $100, absolutely fantastic. Wonderful contribution to the show tonight, Steve. You're, you're a legend and we love we love your company mate so definitely can't wait to catch up with you again real soon and look a very uh, unnecessary and uh, unexpected uh, uh, contribution but um, uh, very much well received and uh, thank you mate from the bottom of uh, bottom of our hearts here at Sit Squad buddy and uh, that's very very kind and uh, thanks thanks again up the catering <laughs> God, it is all happening now, Kurt. Yes, it is. It we're, is just... we're lighting up the airfield tonight, and oh, geez, this is so nice to see the uh, the carbon fibre livery there from uh, our dynasty friends there. Oh, it's just beautiful. Dave O'D, happy Kurt for you. Best of wishes, boys, from up here in Cairns. Ah. You're looking good. Oh, geez, I reckon we're a good couple of good looking roosters. <laughs> if we do say so ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we'll scrub up all right. <laughs> Get on you, Dave. Three months there at the Sydney Harbour Suite. Rail life is back. Sorry to say, Kurt and Will. Canberra has X Ray 4 Alpha and X Ray 4 Bravo. Yep. Uh, and some slowly but surely, a lot of commuter flights going in and out. That is right. Yeah, and. Um... Look at this photo bomber. Oh. Look at that. Get on your rail life. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You, you get the 220s down there. Indeed. They are a nice aeroplane and surprisingly quiet. It is uh, beautiful technology at work there. That is one nice aeroplane. Formerly known as Bombardier C-Series, by the way. Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know. Well, I, I, I didn't know that. But, yeah, well, um, well, the aircraft's not made in... Um, in, in Europe? In, yeah, they're and made in Canada, aren't they? Correct. It yeah. is not made by Airbus. It is designed and made by Bombardier in Canada. But so, uh, yep. Airbus has taken over the commercial... Uh, selling of the aeroplane and they've renamed it the Airbus A220 gotcha. but uh, that's about all Airbus as it is is the badge on the door and uh, Kenny's here oh ooh, sorry Nigel last RPT ooh. arrival either Jetstar 614 or Qantas 559 so it's going to be a race what are the timings there Kenny we've got the A380 414 directed to Dubai rolling ah here we go 
passing the Emirates A380. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we just missed the double. We just missed the double. Bye. All right. Here we go. Let's turn it. Oh, this is the inbound. This is the inbound from ah. uh, from Dubai. 414. Here we go. Yeah, we just needed them to be a little bit ahead of time, time and then we yeah. would have had the double on the show. Never mind. Would have been sensational. <laughs> just closing the nice idle reverse and steadily roll into a stop. One of the big questions I get about the A380 is why does it only have two thrust reverses? Uh, yes, and I believe you're going to answer that question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, love, I love a rhetorical. I believe you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, it's just purely a weight saving issue, and they determined that. Uh, is it really? That's all it is. I mean, a thrust reverser on an engine like that is about 15 look to 16. Look at all the slats and the flaps here. That's <laughs> spoilers up. Yeah, yeah spoilers wow. now dropping. Yeah, dirty um, aircraft now becoming <laughs> clean. So each engine has two thrust reverser halves, and they weigh between six and eight hundred kilos each. So. Uh, wow. Yeah, about 1,500 kilos of reverser per engine. So, if you, you know, you can take them off two engines and not have them fitted. Yeah, There's so about three tonne you've fitted. Like, here I am. I, I would have been thinking that they need all four because it's such a big, heavy laden aircraft that they, they need all the help they can get to slow the, to slow it down. It has a lot of wheels and a lot of brakes, and it does the majority of the work. It, and, clearly uh, so. So why carry three tonnes around if you're not really needed to use it? <laughs> that's that's good, as simple that's as that. Good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. One of the other things that I'd heard too well was that um, it's only got the reverses on the inboard engines because uh, it can operate on... On 45 meter wide runways like what Sydney has. Yep. Um, and that would and be an also it, a contributing factor, if, yes. If it had the outboard thrust reverses, that would be putting extra um, outward thrust towards the shoulders of the runway, which would potentially do damage to them. So by having only the inboard thrust reverses, um, the thrust profile is, is kept well and truly on the prepared hard stand and not out to the shoulders. Yeah, that's great. And it would stop and prevent ingestion. Uh, that is more to the point that you'd be more worried about is re-ingesting um, soil or any other foreign the loose matter. That, up off the sides. <laughs> yeah, so the requirement to now widen <laughs> runways for that to operate was also a byproduct of not having the reverses on the one and four engine as well. But yeah, look, primarily it was to save weight, but yeah, certainly an advantageous byproduct of it being configured like that. Yeah, when we knew the A380 was coming out, Sydney um, widened the shoulders of the runway. Um, yes. They were wide enough for the 747. There was no problems there. No, nope, that's um, right. But but and Melbourne went through the same that. thing. Mel yep, Melbourne Airport went through a widening five. program as well, which, yeah, yeah cost a lot of money. Melbourne Airport's only got 45 metre wide runways, same as Sydney, is that right? I I can't actually answer that or quote that, but I know a widening program did um, it did go ahead at Melbourne. I remember that distinctly because yeah. it yeah. caused a lot of disruption with the airline, with the operations of uh, all the airlines because runway was shut down for, you know, weeks or months. Oh, yeah, it was, it was a huge program at Sydney. Um, mm doing the width of the runway but yeah it's, it's now with the extra wide uh extra wide shoulders so it can handle like i said it can handle the uh the takeoff okay I, the other thing we did differently at sydney too is we took out the elevated uh runway edge lights mm -hmm. and we made them inset eleva uh inset um edge lighting so okay. uh if you have a look at sydney airport's lighting and next time you're flying out of sydney if you happen to go down to the third runway to one six left three four right yep. have a look down there you'll see that the runway edge lighting is elevated lighting but uh on zero seven two five and on one six right three four left it's actually inset lighting. So, Interesting. Um, I'll definitely be looking out for that. And, I did and know that an was old, a, an A380 thing too. I did know an old story at Melbourne Airport that was designed around the 707. And then when the airport opened in 1970, a year later, this new aircraft called a 747 came and it had the same problem at Melbourne Airport. It was more the taxiways. And what Melbourne Airport determined that would do during the 70s and 80s Let's have a vacuum truck chase 747s as they taxied down the taxiways <laughs> to catch anything that blew up. That was the cheaper option. But, yeah, look, um, aeroplanes do grow and technology evolves and airports have to adapt to that. And it's fantastic. Interesting. So I've got an answer for your runway widths at Melbourne, yep. uh, Nigel. Thanks, so Tom. the north-south runway is 60 metres wide and the east-west runway is 45. Oh, there you go. And is the A380... Um, do they use the east-west runway down at Melbourne as well? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 27 is yep. super popular. Yeah, inbounds on 27, okay. yeah. Right. Yep, no problems. Just not, not uh, being one that frequents Melbourne Airport ever. Uh, 
I'm just yeah, not familiar with the operations down there. So there you go. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, okay, we've got, we got a plethora of departures coming out. If you're playing at home, get on board with Flight Radar 24 because we're about to we're about to turn and burn a few oh, we out here a, at uh, Sydney Airport. Hey, I've got we have a, a wonderful lineup. A couple of messages just to catch up on just quickly while we've got this break. Jack Coco, speaking of all the food, someone needs to get in touch with uh, Arnott's and get them to do a Sid Squad special edition. <laughs> Tim Tams, Matt Tams, and Kurt Tams. Are you addicted to Tim Tams the same as what I am? Oh, welcome. <laughs> you, you, you're very much now part of the channel here, Will. If you love your Tim Tams. Because I have a minimum of six packets in my fridge at any one time. <laughs> <laughs> we love our Tim Tams on the show, mate. Oh, get on you, Jack. Thanks for making us think about more food, you cheeky devil. Uh, GRD's here. Kurtzner, sorry about the prawns. I'm still eating them. Two hours in the... Yeah, you can't do that, mate. You can't say you're bringing prawns to the show and no show. Come on, man. <laughs> And I tell you what, you might as well get a bucket of Coronas while you're at it. <laughs> get on your <laughs> GRD. Who doesn't love prawns with a cold beer? Um, great work, guys. My 12-year-old, uh, uh, my 12-year-old twins worship the ground you walk on. Wow! Happy Easter from Perth, Andrew. Oh, good on you, mate. That's very kind. Well, give a shout out to your to your, to your two your 12-year-old twins uh, for us, and uh, let them know that Kurt, Will, and Jack, Michael McDermott is even here, and Dougie and Nigel and Tim there in the background, and Matt as well. All Say hello to your to your uh, to your children, and a big shout out there from the Sid Squad fan band. Love it. Oh, Corey's back. G'day, Corey. Uh, when certain aircraft roll in for unscheduled maintenance, are there some planes where mechanics go, "Oh God, this one, this plane again"? Uh, yeah. Never leave a hotel. Uh, oh, I give any red out. But... What was that? Never leave hangar. <laughs> yeah, never leave hangar. Never leave home. I used to go to work, and you're doing this aircraft, and I'd go, "Oh no." <laughs> they look like cars, you know. Some are. Some have problems and some don't. Some are problem children and some aren't, you know. So, yeah, no, very real scenario, very real thing that happens. And, look, aeroplanes have personalities. They're just like human beings and some give trouble and some don't. And, yeah, fact of life. And Kurt is just off speaking to some of the, the fans at the moment, which is wonderful to see. And it is just great seeing people out here uh, being among the show and joining in and saying good day to everybody and uh I'm just That's waiting for the pop down to the mound even late at night it I know it's uh it's a sunday night um but it is the sunday night before another public holiday so um but it's fantastic yeah yeah certainly lots of people and about the other thing too there's lots of out-of-towners in sydney as well at the moment being a long weekend um yes, all the sydney siders tend to yeah, the Sydney siders get out of town and all the other people go, you ripper, it's, it's a quieter place. <laughs> Let's come into the big city. But uh, <laughs> just a question for you. We're talking about uh, November Lima Hotel. That was the uh, <laughs> yeah. ex-British Airways 747 that uh, Qantas had for um, a short time. Yep. Um, earlier in the chat, uh, La Cijo TTT um, said, can Will tell the story of the, uh, Qantas Three Ugly Sisters purchased a long time ago that needed major work to get up to Qantas standards? They were a running joke back in the Oz dot Aviation News Group days. <laughs> yes, no, and look, they were two uh, Malaysian Airlines seven four sevens and one Eva Air, I think, from memory. And oh, yeah, Asiana? They... I think it was Asiana, wasn't it? Asiana, sorry, yeah, it was one yeah. of the um, Taiwanese airlines. Uh, I didn't get involved in a lot of the heavy maintenance programs, but some of them had some significant issues, and they yeah they did need some love and care and attention to get them up to speed. Yeah, very real, but uh, we used to call them the Three Ugly Sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Got a message now coming in from Grant W. Is there any truth to the rumour that the uh, Qantas A380 Nancy Bird uh, Oscar Quebec Alpha is about to return to Australia this week from uh, uh, Abu Dhabi for the first time since July 2020? Yeah, no, sorry, Grant. Oh, look, I've been out of Qantas for a couple of years now, so I'm but not really up with... Uh, I, I believe the rumour is true. Um, I believe it is coming back uh, sooner than later. So, uh, Grant... Uh, you, you may you may need to stay tuned to Sid Squad because we might be featuring its arrival. Uh, I've already got that one booked in the calendar, so stand by for that. Um, I now, do have a cheeky little question here from John S. Yeah, uh, go for it. General Electric versus Pratt and Whitney. Well, oh, that's dangerous. Well, that can be dangerous. <laughs> oh, look and, <laughs> but uh, look, I, 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 pre <laughs> I prefer a GE. But uh, look, if I was purchasing an airplane and I need to choose the engine, it gets very technical. Um, 
and I could end up buying a Pratt & Whitney for the reasons I need a Pratt & Whitney. Conversely, I could end up buying a GE for the reasons I need to buy a GE. So, yeah, very very complex scenario and just, interesting question. Just going back to Grant's one, 6, 6th of April is, is the date that that's slated for, so for, uh, for uh, uh, the H80 coming back. There you go. I was about to say Pratt & Whitney or uh, GE. If you get GE, you'd buy it for the squeal factor, and if you got <laughs> Pratt & Whitney, you'd certainly buy it for the smoke factor. Yeah. Like... <laughs> When United Airlines had their uh, 747s, they had Pratt & Whitney's on theirs. And they did, my yes. My goodness, they used to smoke it up at the end of the runway. It was just this like, cloud of yellowy-brown smoke on departure. Yeah, there's a kebab um, shop down there. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, but that was like a standard feature for United. It was just... Yeah, and... <laughs> The uh, Malaysian Airlines uh, 330s, they're the only Pratt & Whitney ones we get in Sydney, I think. Uh, I don't think anyone else brings them in. No, you may get the odd 747 freighter that comes in that will be powered by Pratt's. I know the Dubai Air Wing that comes in here regularly, the Royal Flight, they have Pratt oh, & yeah. on theirs. Um, so look, it's, we don't see as many 747 400 series as what we used to in the past, but yeah, you will get them, it's just yep. not every day. Yeah. All right, uh, Warren Post is here now. And uh, Will, the Qantas flight a few months ago with the unusual flight from Perth to Melbourne, uh, was that due to an in-op APU? I don't know the particular one, no, although I, can't I think do know either. EBA had an engine failure on descent. Yeah, I right. I still haven't heard exactly what happened to that one. Um, yeah, I can only roughly guess, but it's just a pure speculation what had happened to that. It could just simply be anything. But uh, no, if the APU is out on an aeroplane, it is not an issue for the operation. It just may need to fly a slightly longer uh, flight plan so as it can keep within ETOPS parameters. Brian Bruce, get hey Brian, part of the furniture. Hello, gents, just popping in to wish everyone a happy Easter. I'm in Indiana. This is uh, the weekend, uh, visiting my dad who turned 89 earlier in the month. Have a good stream and I'll oh. catch you on the next one. I'll get on you, Brian. And uh, best wishes to your dad yes. picking up uh, uh, 89, which is absolutely mega. Wow. Wow, that's, that's huge. Well, uh, happy Easter to you and yours, Brian. Uh, we, we love happy you, mate. Happy birthday, dad. Yeah, 89 years. I hope I make it to 89. Oh, 13 years. <laughs> Join the queue. Join the queue, my friend. We have uh, China Airlines, the carbon fibre nifty 50 lining up. Yeah, they'll be out the door real, real soon. Thank you, Brian, for your contribution, as always, to the show and to the channel. I don't think, I don't think Brian's missed the show, and uh, we love having him here, and he's, uh, he's always very kind. So thank you, mate. Appreciate that. And, uh, oh, Danny, <laughs> Daniela Sekutova is uh, dropping those kroners in again. Thank you, Daniela. <laughs> Message coming in from uh, Ocar Oliver's Car and Reviews. Just got back from filming in uh, Rocky Nats in Rockhampton. I'm absolutely tired and now watching Seed Squad. Relaxing at home in Maryborough, Queensland. Keep it up. Oh, good on oh, you, good Oliver. On. And uh, thank you for your support, mate. And uh, appreciate uh, appreciate you being here as well. A dynasty now, uh, 52. They'll be uh, coming out from behind the trees in just a moment. Here we go. since I've seen that uh, carbon fibre livery and that, oh, geez, it looks great doesn't it I <laughs> think it's one of their best yeah, around it, it is really good fantastic oh it's just beautiful and if you've just tuned in uh, recently we were talking before about uh, brake dust just before the gear goes up and uh, the reason behind that is is that you don't want your wheels spinning as you're retracting them uh, you certainly don't want a, a ruined tyre spinning around inside your wheel well. So what happens is when you select gear up on an airliner, there's around 500 psi brake pressure goes to the wheels to stop the wheels spinning and before it starts to uh, retract into the bay. And uh, with carbon fibre brakes, you'll get a little squirt of brake dust Ooh. kicking out. So. Yeah, you can just gonna, see it. We'll keep an eye out on that on our daytime shows and see if we can uh, get a Guernsey Yeah, that. you'll see it much clearer during your daytime streams, but uh, you can catch coming it. Out, yeah. Is um is there like different brake manufacturers or does um is there typically like one main supplier of brakes to everyone? Like uh, how does that work? Well, yeah, there's a couple of uh, brake manufacturers. Uh, I can't really quote the names of them off by heart, but uh, 
Also, when you purchase an aeroplane, you can choose the type of brakes you want. So for a 737, you can have steel brakes or carbon brakes. Um, but you know, there's lots of choices you can have. It's customize my plane. It pretty much is, yes. <laughs> get what you get but certainly for more um, versatile domestic aircraft like 737s where you may need that choice you can have choice of types of brakes and uh, yeah you will get differences certainly there well yeah, nice. just in the chat there Gary Matrix said this is my second day here with you guys but this may be a silly question but what's with this curfew is it the area you're in yeah look Gary um, just very briefly uh, Sydney Airport operates under a curfew so um, between 2300 hours local and 0600 hours the following morning local time. Um, Sydney Airport subject to a curfew. And during that time, the only aircraft that can operate are either um, uh, freighters, BA 146s that have got a dispensation to operate during that time. And there's only limited numbers per week that they can operate um, or medical flights. Uh, you do get a, the odd corporate flight come through, but the aircraft have got to be approved to be able to um, operate through the curfew period. Um, basically, it gives Sydney's residents a bit of a break from the aircraft noise. So. Um, Sydney Airport is surrounded, as you can see in the background with the pictures here, by um, hotels and there's residential areas all around as well. Um, there's a few industrial areas as well, but um, yeah, a lot of residential. So um, uh, they just try and give the, the neighbours a bit of a break for the noise uh, for seven hours overnight. A message coming through now from Northern Beaches Aviation. What a surprise to see the special China Airlines livery. And yeah, you, you got it. Shout out as well. Yeah, we, we, we might have missed it. We're having too much fun chatting here, and it can happen. <laughs> a nice That's little wine glass. Nice little wine glass off the left hand. Yeah, look at it go. It oh, is gorgeous. Beauty. They definitely have a, an old fashioned rumble, those Pratt and Whitney's on the 330. <laughs> We've got a message now coming in from uh, Johnny Logan. Looks like there's a uh, cheeky stream starting at 6 a.m. tomorrow from the Gold Coast. Oh, well, there you go. It's been posted, ladies and gentlemen. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we've got over 2,000 people tuned into the live show here tonight. Uh, we would absolutely love it if you could just go and smash that like button. If you haven't already uh, given today's show a bit of a thumbs up, it's a great indication of how you've enjoyed the coverage today. And uh, perhaps while you're there, consider subscribing to the channel. And uh, we'd uh, love to have you company on the next live show and uh, both of those uh, forms of uh, support here to Sid Squad are absolutely free to do so uh, dropping a thumbs up on the show free to do so go on get involved and uh, show us some love and uh, uh, really really do appreciate it well there you go Johnny Logan uh, doing the uh, the shout out there for um, Matt's show tomorrow morning so I can comfortably say that uh, the next live stream show is going to be at the Gold Coast tomorrow morning courtesy there of Matt up there on the Gold Coast which is just magic uh, get on you mate and uh, thank you for that wonderful wonderful support just give me one sec there guys i got a message here coming in from uh, Ke uh, kenny jetstar 614 in at 10 50 p.m qantas 559 uh, uh, 2241 so it's either of those two to be the final rpt movement in tonight as we watch a and a taxing down alpha as we speak get on you kenny steve tomassi uh, message there oh was there uh, i'll just see if i can bring it up there we go canberra airport open day this coming weekend looking forward to see you seed squad mob here too sometime <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm definitely going to talk him into it <laughs> yes yeah well we will we will we'll just have to pick the right time to uh to make it down there for sure indeed uh thank you for that wonderful message there Stephen. well done mate well done
All right, what have we got next coming up? Cathay 138 off to Hong Kong, A350-9er. Just uh, waiting for a global which has just landed. Oh, uh, coming through nicely. I'll, I'll see if I can pick that up in just a minute. And uh, the Cathay 350 is about to line oh, up. I can see that global coming through. And then we've got the China Southern 302, the 789er as well to go. All Nippon Airways also in the lineup to go out tonight as well. And uh, then we keep our eyes on the uh, the action uh, for the last arriving service, I believe. We're also going to have another look around the grounds to see what else is due out to go. But well, there's our global, Will. Gee, she looks, she looks fancy. Oh, it is nice, this one, isn't it? And if we can just scroll, it looks like she's British registered. Uh, let me just slow it up for you. Yep, G. G-H-N-E-Y. So she's a British uh, registered global. Wow, it's a long looks, way from home. Looks a bit smart. I think we'll just put that in the uh, the Sid Squad hangar, I dare say. <laughs> Another one to add to the collection. <laughs> As Cathay starts to roll uh, there at runway 3, 4 left. Nifty 50, 900. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that you call it that, mate. That's Ah, oh, it, yeah. uh, it is an absolutely yeah. sensational <laughs> aeroplane. It has earned, earned its title, the Nifty 50, because it is one nifty oh, aircraft. Yeah. Message coming in from uh, Johnny Sinclair. Just want to shout out to my friends Jimmy and Ains on that Cathay Pacific flight. Well, they're about to come onto the screen. Heading back to the UK. Thanks, Sid Squad, for the stream. Happy Easter. Oh, I love it. Well, good on you, John. Great timing for you because they're about to come past the tree line and we'll see them very, very soon. And Simon's there. One more before the cat. Zoom in for kebabs on the Cathay. <laughs> we did see them on the uh, on one of our recent shows, didn't we? Tucking in in the back seat there by the second officer. Good on you, Simon. A lovely shout out. And uh, yep, they'll be uh, coming up behind the trees in just a minute. I don't know that we'll get too close in there to see whether they're chowing down on some kebab. Maybe when we do another one, uh, another car park live show. But here we go. They're coming up now. And uh, let's enjoy the, uh, what do you call it, the Nifty 350, is no, it? No, just the Nifty 50. Oh, the Nifty 50, which is a camera lens, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, uh, here we go. Here we go. Well, uh, I've always, uh, I always get asked on the on the show, Will, what uh, what my favourite aircraft is, and you know, you got to have an answer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, amongst many, but uh, the 350 is right up there for me. It's just uh, I got to fly on it uh, more recently, and look, <laughs> okay, up the pointy end, um, but albeit a, a wonderful experience and a wonderful aircraft. So I, I totally agree with you on that. I haven't yet had a ride on a 350, but I've had a good look over several of them, and uh, they are quite a, an impressive aeroplane. TriStar Darren is here. G'day TriStar Darren up there in the Bondi Beach Cabana, mate. Appreciate your support of the show. As always, been a wonderful supporter for a long time. Mr. TriStar Darren, love your company. We've got kids and everyone up here at Sheps Mountain. I don't know why they're not in bed, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty Miller's here. Awesome to be watching in the same time zone for once. I flew Queenstown to Auckland to Melbourne today on, oh wow, today, on the, uh, the New Zealand 789er. Uh, now it's hotel bed and more sit squad. Isn't that brilliant? <laughs> <laughs> oh, get on you, Scott. And uh, how were those flights, mate? That's, uh, that's awesome. You did that today. Now, I see a beacon on down here. Where is it? Oh, that's the Kiwis just getting uh, being put put to bed, I think, on the, uh, the standoff apron. I've just got to have a quick look to see. You know why, Will? They weren't going. I don't think that 3.30 is going out. No, that's not actually. going anywhere. No. I think it's uh, parked up. That's that's tucked into bed for the Spinning night. Spinning it around. The, three, uh, the Jetstar came in earlier. The Emirates came in. That'll stay. Uh, oh, we've, uh, we've frozen our, our camera, so just give me... Oh, so there we go. There Sorry, we I'm, go. I'm just talking on the wrong camera. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, I get distracted sometimes. Uh, Singapore will stay. Thai will stay. So I think... I think if we... We've got China Southern now coming out, uh, and they'll be past the tree line in just a moment's time. 
And then um, the All Nippon Airways uh, 7, 8, 9 will be going out as well. So two heavies to come. Here's the first of the two. Uh, just, uh, 141, ready. Just oh, a little bit of brake dust. Please, 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 I want to see if we can bring that back on the old uh, Little Wings instant replay so we can see if we can pick that out. Cause, uh, so you saw it clearly there, did yeah, you? Yeah, yeah right. right. Okay. Little shake of brake dust there, just just caught. But, yeah, much better, much easier to see it, yeah, in the yeah. daytime. Okay, good. I'm going to keep my eye out. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Magic. It is magic, isn't it? Oh, look oh. at that going through the cloud, <laughs> and you'll see the vortices. Oh, oh the wingtip yeah, vortices. Yeah, it's been lit up as well, just yeah, brilliantly. That is sensational. <laughs> oh, that is mint. I mean, that's, that is, you, you can't see that with your, that no. is pitch black out there. Yeah, naked and look, eye. look at that, it's, there's the love heart that it's made yep. just, just beautifully there. <laughs> wow. Wait till you see that, lads, online. Look at that. And now, uh, yeah, the, that would be um, a good posting for a highlights replay, I reckon. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Right. Uh, all Nippon Airways, 880 down there at the far end. Emirates 380 looks like it's getting tucked in for the night. It's a very graphic demonstration of wake turbulence, isn't it, when you see them punching holes through the clouds light? Correct. Oh, so definitely. It, it makes you understand that, that yeah, it's not to be messed with. And, and the thing is, that spiral is going to keep going for, for quite some time until it finally sinks down. For a, good, the for a good 30 seconds to a minute, that spiral will be happening, and that can yep. cause you a lot of problems when you're on approach. So, yeah. Oh, you'd feel it inbound, yeah. yeah. Luca yeah, yeah. Carver is here. Hey, guys, what's your favourite uh, flight route from Sydney? Oh, geez, that's a dangerous one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. All Nippon here now taking off, ripping one out, three, four left. I know what my favourite drive route is from Sydney. It's the one that I take to go home. <laughs> <laughs> After the, uh, <laughs> After the 12 uh, hours the long on the bus. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> Easy, Tiger. <laughs> oh, flight route. I, look, got to say, the furthest. Oh, jeez. Let's see if we get it, uh, if, we, if we get it from all Nippon. We'll, uh, we'll stay on it and see if the similar cloud le uh, level yeah, is up there. Just needs to punch through the right bit of cloud and you've got it. Now, which I think we might be coming up to. Now, are we are we done for uh, for movements here tonight? We've got a couple of arrivals to roll through, but... Um, oh, there we go. There we go. Do we... Oh, jeez, just... Looks good. Now, not being a Sydney spotter, what is the last departure for the evening? Well, it's always a mix. It's always a mixed bag. We got stung the <laughs> other night. We, do, we just never know. I just rely on others to tell me, and that's part of the excitement of the sh of the live show. You see. <laughs> 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 so, Kenny, where are you, my friend? I think we've got Nigel and Tim on the case, trying to work out what our last movements are. But that might very well be the final departure out the door tonight here. But we've got a couple of rivals to roll through, I believe. And um, and to wrap things up, we've certainly got a um, a couple of messages there in the chat that I just want to rip through just quickly uh, while I've while I've got everyone here as well, and uh, some some generous donations coming through as well. Uh, G Radi is there? Can I, G boys? Uh, can turbulence be avoided? Um, that's an interesting question. It is an interesting question, <laughs> and look, no. Uh, well, yes, but no. Sudden turbulence like that, if you can't see it, you hit it, you're yeah. going to feel it. Yeah. That's as simple it's as that. It's stuff. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. It's as simple as that. Uh, look, turbulence also is in thunderstorms and other cloud layers, and I, not that I'm a pilot or have that background, but uh, having flown enough, I know they spend a lot of their time dodging it or using weather radar to see uh, the moisture in the air, and, yeah, they spend their time dodging Yes, they can see that sort it's of stuff. It's a really good question, though. It's, I mean, it's, if you don't know the answer, you might as well ask it. Yeah, exactly. Good to be discussed. Well, here we go. Skittles, my dear. Oh, Skittles, she's gone in and said, Good morning, Sid Scott. I truly appreciate your live streams. And gosh, it's 4.32 a.m. Get oh, <laughs> five, five or six minutes to go there. That's the middle on the, of the night. On the west coast of Washington State. And the moon is still out. It's going to be a great day. Happy Easter, everyone. And uh, thank you. And cheers. Yeah, where, where's our moon? It's not risen yet, I don't think. Or it is, if it is, it's just behind the building and we can't see it.
But uh, it is supposed to be uh, supposed to be coming out, of course. But Skittles, uh, lovely to have your company, and um, thank you for uh, sending the uh, the wonderful email, Junior. I've got to get back to you. I will. I'll um, I'll come back to you indeed. But uh, thanks for your wonderful, generous contribution to the show tonight. Lovely to have you as part of the channel and part of the show as always. Our wonderful Skittles, always looking after us. I don't even know if you've missed one of our shows, especially tuning in at like 4:30 in the morning. My word, my dear. That is dedication, isn't it? <laughs> that is brilliant. You. I love it. <laughs> Cheeky little A380 here, Ms. Wires. For the future, invisible planes. I just can't see them taking off. <laughs> Good on you. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> oh, that's... Yes, yes, yes. Oh, we, we're back on the dad jokes again, are we? <laughs> and uh, James uh, Trelevan uh, was here. He's, the message has been removed, but uh, thank you so much for the, uh, for the general uh, uh, donation to the show tonight, mate. Appreciate uh, your wonderful support. And uh, you guys are awesome. Ah, oh, look, there's a message coming in from Michelle. Hello, fellas, long-time viewer, first-time donor. First time donor. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Michelle. Thank you for that, and uh, welcome to Sid Squad Down Under. It's plane spotting here at Sydney Airport. Local time now is 10.39, almost going on 10.40. Uh, Qantas 559 over the keys in just a second. It's a service coming in from Brisbane. It's a 73700. Uh, that will be next to land and go past the cameras. And uh, uh, no more departures. Kenny is confirming there uh, as well. So we're done on departures. Just the uh, the two arriving, I believe it is. Qantas then we've got a third one in as well. It's a uh, Keelink Dash 8 Q300 from Armadale. Well, how far? Oh, I can 11 see it. 1120. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I don't yeah. think we're going to stay for that. I can see it. I've zoomed far enough out of the uh, the, the old flight radar here tonight to see it. Um, but uh, it is Easter Sunday, so it uh, makes sense that we're not going too much further. Uh, we'll see Qantas 559. We'll see Jetstar 614 roll through, and then we're going to call it stumps here tonight at Sydney Airport. So probably about another 10 minutes on the live show. It is a pity because one of the uh, things I like about joining into Sid Squad uh, curfew streams oh, yes. is, is those last minute uh, departures. Well, and will it, nail biters. Will, you know, will. are you going to get out? Will. You know? yeah. yeah. Well, the la yeah. Well, that's right. A, a, a huge shame that we, uh, we everyone. Well, good work to uh, air traffic control and obviously to all the ops staff uh, working there at uh, Sydney Airport and they've done a great job to um, to get their aircraft out the door before curfew. So uh, well done. The, the, it's, everything's worked tonight. It has, and it is actually quite stressful down there on the apron. Uh, you have an aeroplane, you have to get it out because we have the Sydney curfew issue in Melbourne when I was working there. Right. We had to get a plane out you got it to get it here before 11 o'clock. Yeah, so yeah, that's a right. very real thing. Yeah, it was you would now yeah, you, you well. often you often get you often think that oh it's just Sydney that's affected by no. their curfew, but it's all the other airports that have got to get their flights out the door on time Correct. to make curfew landing in. That uh, Emirates flight, if it, it's running half an hour late out of Dubai, we've got a problem. We've got a problem because yeah. you can't come here, and uh, yeah, it is very stressful and very demanding on people who work in the industry, and all levels. You know, check in, baggage, engineering, flight crew. You name it, they uh, do sensational work and to, to make it happen. Jeff Andrews here, good morning, 7.39 here in Dallas. Such an awesome channel and great guest. Oh, there you go, that's to you, Will. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, well done, mate. Uh, two months there in the Sydney Harbour Suite, you legend. And Oscar's still here, superb night for plane spot and loving it. <laughs> I've got to take him home soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, look, we're not, we're not far off. And uh, look, as I said, whenever you guys feel you, you're ready to go, uh, yeah, at, 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 at your leisure. Neil, Gary's here. Um, and he's saying 0040 in New Zealand. Uh, just caught the end. Great presenters tonight and light. Love it. Oh, the Kiwi 20. Gary, you champion. Hopefully you're doing well, mate. Very, very kind of you to uh, join us here on the, uh, the Seed Squad live show. Uh, the aircraft, the final aircraft on tonight's show is Oh, pr pretty much on a base leg at the moment, coming in from Avalon. There you go, lovely oh, place. There you go. Yes. I think it's a nice one to round the show off uh, uh, for you, Will. I thoroughly enjoyed Avalon. I, it's a that's a wonderful little airport. Yeah. Um, I think it deserves more credit than it gets. <laughs> it really is a good place. Well, they've got an air show next year, so um, maybe we might go down there and say hello to uh, good old Avalon, and uh, we'll check it out. Uh, get on you, uh, Gary. Thanks for that, mate. And. Um, yeah, so what do I miss? TG flicked an email. I'll, I'll have to check it. Thanks for that, Tim. I'll, um, I will pick it up and uh, we'll go back through. So if anyone has uh, flicked uh, Sid Squad an email over the last couple of days, I'll uh, certainly, certainly pick it up. <laughs> so the Dash 8 coming in at quarter past 11. Whoa, geez, that's another good half hour or so for us out, out here. Uh, it is Easter Sunday and uh, we, we might uh, skip that one. Um, we've got an air ambulance going to Maria in about five minutes. Oh, sorry, it's a citation. 
Uh, well, well, we might see it in five minutes if that's going to come out. We'll uh, we'll see that indeed. Josh Amos is here. Hey, Kurt, just want to say thanks for taking the time to meet me while you're streaming and enjoy your donuts. <laughs> Get on you, Josh, mate. Don't you worry. Those donuts will be eaten and very much taken care of. Fear not. <laughs> I think I might take one for the journey home. I think you will. I think you will. Which one? There's two boxes there. <laughs> and uh, Springbok, and he's uh, saying, a fellow New Zealand pilot, love your work, fellas. Uh, good on you, Springbok. Thank you, Springbok. And uh, thank you for your service, mate. Yeah, love it. And well I done. I remembered handling Air New Zealand, and the crew for Air New Zealand were absolutely sensational. Fond memories of you guys. Yeah, big shout out to everybody uh, still tuning into the show. It's lovely to have your company. And a uh, special shout out to all the moderators actually on the show. They do a wonderful job supporting us. We couldn't do these shows without them because obviously, as you know, the chat's been super flying tonight. We've had almost over 2,000 people watching the show in its entirety concurrently. And, um, you know, obviously to be able to read every single chat message is just impossible. Um, but, you know, as I always say, I take great pleasure in going back and reading through the chat and watching the show. So I will see your message. Um, so keep keep dropping them in there. Special shout out to Tim who's been there in the background as the Sid Squad handle tonight looking after things as well. So thank you Tim for being uh, for being online tonight uh, in the background and uh, also to Nigel and to, uh, to Dougie as well virtually. It's always great having uh, some extra company out here while we do these shows. Legendary support. And on that note I do need to mention I do have a bit of experience in radio believe it or not over oh, the years. Oh look out now, and, you, uh, now you're <laughs> dropping it Will. But, uh, <laughs> can I say what you've got set up here Kurt, the work you do uh, how you manage it is an absolute Absolute sensation. Just, I am just call me DJ Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it is quite a challenge uh, managing <laughs> managing this operation, and just I've just had the pleasure of standing here and talking. It's, it's been, been great. It but, has uh, been. It but has to, been. To see you operate and what you do, uh, you need a big thank you as well. So oh, it's, it's my pleasure, mate. It's and great uh, work. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really do appreciate it, and um, I think it comes from uh, the, the the love of uh, oh, well, obviously obviously the, the tech, <laughs> uh, but also for for the industry and uh, and, and aviation in general, and, and wanting to be able to bring uh, you know that to life for, for people that can't you know can't be out here and uh, the fact that we've got the avenue to 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 show it and uh, to spread it I, I really really take great pleasure in doing that so um, I, I think it's lovely to have so many people interested in the show and wanting to follow on and see what it's all about and and I, I think we're just quietly I think we're quietly proud of our, our airport up here and, and and the ability for us to be able to put it on the world stage and to show it off a little bit. It's and, exactly. And it's to talk to it, yeah. um, which which is I absolutely love doing. And I know Tim does as well. I know, Nigel, you do as well. You wouldn't be working well, you wouldn't be working airside for the last 25 years if you didn't. And, oh, um, and look, this medium is fantastic. You know, and, and I'm not, I, I sit in Canberra and, and I spend a few hours at Sydney Airport via YouTube. It is absolutely fantastic. And then I can have a sleep and do, do it all again and I'll be in LA. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. there's strings yes. And it's yeah. a community of people all around the That's world. That's right. You're not and wrong. later that night, yeah, I'm in definitely. Amsterdam. And it's just fabulous. This, uh, this curfew uh, show is just probably one of the best around. It is fantastic. And, and being in the industry, you can see the nail-biting... Uh, scenarios of, of the last half an hour and and you display this very well through your channel and through your program. It's I really brilliant. do appreciate that Will, it's very humbling and uh, and thank you mate and, and thanks for being here tonight, it's great to really catch up with you again. <laughs> thank Far you, out. it's brilliant. Uh, we will do this again, fear not. And um, um, If uh, if your guests uh, want me and give me the vote, I'll come back another <laughs> mate, night. I don't, I don't think that's even a question, so uh, I'm not going to take any votes, you're just on. Uh, Kenny's here, he's going, amen, uh, will it not be easy, very demanding. Oh yeah, thanks mate. Oh, sorry, will, it's not very, It's not easy, very demanding. Yeah, well Kenny's yeah. one of the others who loves to come out and hang out with us as, uh, out the back here and uh, he, he's always, he's been on the show uh, a few times as well. So Kenny knows firsthand. So what a legend. Thanks, Kenny. Sorry, Thanks, yes, Kenny. That's brilliant. Sorry we couldn't uh, have you out here tonight as well. Uh, Joshua and Wil Wilmot, what happens if a plane doesn't get in or out by curfew? Overnight delay? Well, look, lots mm. of scenarios. Uh, There's lots a, of complexities to that. Yeah, if, if an aircraft is coming in late and they still want to land, uh, they can get approval from their airline to do so. Uh, but there also needs to be ministerial approval at a government level for them to check that off. Uh, and if... If, if it's approved, uh, well, I mean, if, if it's approved, then they're, they're coming in and they get dispensation. Uh, if they break it on purpose and they don't get permission and they do a cheeky, then there's a there's a, a, a it's over a million dollar fine, I think, by doing so. Um, for an aircraft going out, typically they've got to have their taxi clearance uh, to depart by top of the hour, so 11 p.m., so in about 12 minutes from now. 
Um, and if they've got that taxi clearance, it doesn't then matter how long they take on the ground to get out to the runway, um, whether related or whatnot, they can still depart. Uh, similarly, breaking the curfew, generally, well, we have seen it on the show, aircraft haven't departed if they can't meet the curfew requirements. They get turned around and go back to the gate um, if they can't get um, dispensation approved. Now, if you read the Act, it's quite... It's well, it's, it's an old act. It's been around since uh, the late 90s uh, here at Sydney Airport, the curfew. And, I mean, it generally didn't have any provisions for weather-related events, although more recently we're seeing more and more aircraft being dispensated by weather events, which is actually, I find, personally quite interesting because it kind of goes a little bit against the act. Now, unless there's parts of the act that I'm not reading, and it, it is a long act, yep. I haven't been everything, I haven't scrutinised it, I'll tell you what, I'm, <laughs> I'm not that interested. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I just find that fascinating. Maybe, Nigel, you've got a little bit more perspective or, or input on that, perhaps. What about past curfew? Like, if you get a clearance at uh, time 5.58, two minutes before the hour, yeah, yeah. Uh, you restrict to what runway can be used, for example? Yeah, well, generally here in Sydney, we're usually, usually using 3.4 uh, yeah. coming in off the beat, uh, coming in off the ocean mm -hmm. um, for arrivals into, um, into the airport. Um, and that's no normally for noise abatement procedures. Yep. And I think, Nigel, in certain seasons, we have up to two aircraft that will come in prior curfew or they get approval or dispensated. Is that right? Yeah, during daylight savings ends, uh, what, next week, I think it is? It is um, next week. Um, yeah. yeah it, it ends next week and there'll be three flights that um, have approval to operate uh, between 5 o'clock and 6 in the morning, which is called the shoulder period. Mm -hmm. uh, typically one British Airways flight, one Qantas flight and one Singapore Airlines flight. Um, if they don't make it in before six that's fine they can arrive after six there's no problems at all nobody else can take their place though so just say united gets a united or delta gets a cracking run across the pacific if they turn up early they can't then take their slot if one of those three can't take it um will they be forced into holding yes correct yeah, 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 yeah. Have to wait yeah. until 6 a.m but see so yeah, that 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 shoulder period arrival is is very specific mm. um and i believe i from what i understand it's got something to do with with other airports curfew restrictions in terms of being able to get the aircraft to here in time it has to leave their airport like their departure airport yeah. by a certain time there, there's yeah, there's some reasoning behind it all i'm not sort of I'm pretty sure it's to do with the london curfew timing yep that sounds about right yeah what where and it's, it's amazing that that when you think about it, like for an aircraft to get from Sydney to London, it has to have a, a stopover somewhere for, you know, refuelling, etc. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so whatever happens in London on the opposite side of the world is, is affecting what we have here. So, um, and just, just back on what you were saying, Kurt, about aircraft getting um, taxi clearance prior to uh, 2300 hours local. Um, if in summer there's a, a like a decent northeasterly wind blowing, which isn't uncommon, um, and it blows all the way up to yeah, up into the curfew period, because the aircraft have to leave in the one six direction after time four five, so twenty two forty five, all departures have to go off uh, one six right or one six left. Mm -hmm. um, if they're sitting up at the alpha one holding point and the tailwind is too great, they don't automatically get excluded just because they've you know, hit 2300 and they say, OK, curfew's in place, you can't leave. Um, they've got the option to sit there and wait until the curfew, uh, sorry, until the tailwind component on 16 right actually calms down enough for the aircraft to then be able to take off. So um, that can be very demanding as well because aeroplanes do have their performance operating limits. restrictions, their limits, and they, there might be tailwinds they just cannot take off in. And, yeah. You can wait forever, and they don't go. They don't go. It's just yeah, it's pretty, pretty demanding a, scenario. That's right, Will. And if it's a big northeasterly wind blowing during summer, that yeah. northeasterly can continue to like you know midnight, one o'clock in the morning before it finally backs up enough, um, so that it's actually you know within those limits. Now, some airlines might decide we've waited long enough. We'll just taxi back to the bay. Yeah. There might be like uh, flight crew hours that they've got to consider as well. Yeah. Um, but other aircraft, yep, yeah, if they've got the, the hours and the time and the fuel, um, they'll yeah. happily sit there for half an hour and just wait until that wind gets down and it'll be a constant, you know, can we get a wind check? Can we get a wind check? Can we get a wind check? <laughs> and it's crew, <laughs> and hours moment... that, crew hours is the thing that will kill a lot of airlines, but, uh, yeah, fuel yep. is probably the next thing. You know, they've run out of fuel. They don't have enough for the journey to do it safely. And, yeah, yep. very real problems. Yeah, Absolutely.
No, it's it's fascinating. It's fantastic, uh, fascinating uh, politics behind all the curfew. Oh, and jeez, yeah. Go, 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 read, go read the act. I, I, I encourage <laughs> oh, yeah. I encourage you all. We, we, unfortunately, we can't fit the whole act in the Nightbot uh, problem when people ask about what's, what's, what's well, to go you, with the curfew. You ever need putting to sleep? Just read that. Yeah, ex- exactly. Oh, oh definitely. All right, uh, a couple of messages to uh, to round out there. That was a, that was a, a wonderful, great question there from Josh. Uh, Elias is here. Hey, it's got another great stream. Keep it up. Good on you, Elias. Thank you, mates. Rail TV's back. Thanks, Kurt and Will, for the stream tonight. And uh, Will, have a safe drive back to Canberra. He's not far off going. We're <laughs> Thanks, almost out the door. Like... Stand by. Oh, Ian Cordell is here. And uh, Ian is one of our blind viewers here on the show saying thanks, Will, and the lads for the extra tech talk tonight. Made the stream from Ian in, uh, in Tarman. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, very thank kind. You, Ian. That's Ian. excellent. Wonderful supporter. He normally has the 9.1 surround sound going on, so I'm sure his neighbours have loved, loved him tonight. <laughs> 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 on you, Ian. Uh, Hussain. Uh, is that... Is is that, is that one of you boys? No. Uh, welcome to the Bondi Beach Cabana, Hussein. Thank you, mate, for your support. Well done, mates, you legend. And uh, Kieran is here as well. First time I've managed to watch the whole stream. And super interesting listening to Will. Thanks, oh, from, thank you, thanks from New Zealand. Appreciate and, that. Thank um, you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to round out the show here tonight. And uh, that, is, uh, going to, uh, that is going to pretty much call it quits for us out here. Uh, but uh, we've had an absolute pearler of a time uh, enjoying uh, Will. Um, okay. Now, hang on. Let me just uh, let me just see if we can. Uh, oh, there we go. We're on. We're on. <laughs> Look out. We've got a big behind the uh, scenes crew here today. But um, hey, uh, hey, Will, thanks for being here today. Good. Mate. Thank lovely, you. lovely nice having surprise. your company and welcome, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. No, great to be here and uh, great, great to just talk aeroplanes and how about have it? Have a bit of fun yeah, and be how a part about of it. It's how, been great. How about it, mate? And um, well, we, we hope to see you again soon at some point. I know that you do say that you come up here often, so we will stay connected again. We'll stay connected and, and uh, uh, we'll let you know. Maybe we can plan it and let the viewers, listeners know that we'll be coming and uh, they can get ready with their questions and, uh, and now, we can talk Now Jess. I think they're going to force Sid Squad to head on down to Canberra and do a live <laughs> show down there. But um, yes. I, I would absolutely love that. That would be really good. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's a wrap on tonight's uh, Sid Squad live show. Uh, you've been hanging out with Kurt and, and Will and Jack's there in the background. Michael McDermott's over there hiding away. Oscar's there as well and a couple of the other lads as well tuning in in the background. Um, and I've got to say special thanks to everybody who came out today to Shep's Mound tonight on their Easter as well well to come and say hello to the Seed Squad family. Really, really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, to the moderators once more, thank you for being uh, wonderful supporters there in the chat and keeping things going. Um, look, it's not too late. If you haven't given a thumbs up yet to, the, to today's show, get on down there and click uh, a like. It's free to do. Supports the channel. Uh, gets the word out uh, more and more about aviation here at Sydney Airport and we'd love to be a little bit more on the map. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed, perhaps uh, do that as well. It's free to do and uh, we'd love to have your company on the next live show. Uh, big Props to our charity partners of choice here, Little Wings. If you're interested in merchandise for the show, uh, head on over to sidsquad.com.au and just know that any purchase that you make, all the money will go straight to children's charity Little Wings, where we couldn't be more proud supporting, uh, you know, the, the flight of sick kids from the regional town centres into the big cities to get medical treatment that they otherwise wouldn't be able to get uh, in their hometowns. We wish we didn't have to support them, uh, but because they do exist, um, we, we love doing that. We couldn't be more proud. And uh, wow, that's it. Thank you, everybody, for being there in the chat and keeping us busy. Lots of really cool questions that's tonight as well. You're yeah, keeping us on our toes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, t- I don't know if I could have answered all those questions without you without you being here today. And I will, did see so. lots of questions, and yeah, look, it, we just couldn't fit most you, of them in. We, but yeah, yeah we, we can't fit them all in. But we'll, we'll, you know, I go back and, and read the uh, chat and, and take great pleasure in doing so. So keep it going, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Keep the engagement going. It's what makes the channel gives the channel the character and the and the feel good nature about what it's about. And um, yeah, so we love that. Nigel and Dougie tuning in virtually. Any any final words before we go lads no look well <laughs> will thanks for your um expertise tonight uh thank it's you. been awesome sort of having a chat about it. just all the engineering stuff that um like i said even for me like i just don't get the chance to to be able to speak to engineers like that and uh and to be able to sort of find out all those little sort of just those little technical questions yeah all the quirky uh, all the quirky yeah. nicks nicks and the that. reasons <laughs> why and all that Absolutely. this is why we're going to have him back on uh, uh, nigel don't worry 100%, uh, yeah. 100%, <laughs> and, and yeah uh, it's been sort of great to, to 
hear your name again because far out I've not heard <laughs> about you for a long time. I so know, I know. There you go. So thank you. It's great to have you back. No, thank you. We definitely will be back. I look forward to it. And it, as I said, it's just great talking about aeroplanes and being among the community and look, just seeing families here. It is just yeah. so, so good seeing new people get involved in the industry and they will become professionals in time. Uh, they're inspired by this place, what we do and the community that we have all around the world. And look, just get out there, talk to people, spot, enjoy your planes. Yeah. It's a great hobby. That's what it's all about, that's really. That's what it's all about. And I'm glad that we all love doing it together. Yeah. yeah. And Very that's good. the main thing. Dougie, signing off, mate. Uh, I have got nothing to add. <laughs> you might all be covered. <laughs> nah, that's, that's, it's lovely to have you, uh, you guys on the show as well. It definitely makes it as well. I always love having the company in my ears and um, it certainly gives another dynamic. And uh, so I appreciate, appreciate you all joining in and being part of the show. Well, uh, live stream tomorrow, Sid Squad, 6 a.m. up there on the Gold Coast. Matt's going to take you through all the coverage up there on your Easter Monday. So don't miss it. Put it in your calendar. Go to bed now. Put your alarm on. 6 a.m. local time up there. On, now, they're an hour behind us. So uh, you might turn up early if you're from uh, if you're from New South Wales, but that's okay. <laughs> but Matt's going to take you through uh, the live coverage up there on the Gold Coast. I, I'm led to believe, so fingers crossed. Um, that's it. I don't think that's it. We, we're we're going to get out the door and not put you through any more pain. But uh, thank you, everyone for being here. Whatever it is you get up to between now and the next time that at least I see you, uh, you're being tuned into Sid Squad Live. This is Plane Spotting here down under at Sydney Airport. Loved having your company. Can't wait to see you on the next show and uh, look after yourselves. And that's it from the uh, Sid Squad crew. Bye for now. We'll see you later. Yeah. Take care, everyone. See ya. See ya. See ya. <laughs> Brilliant. Very good.